On today's episode of Homeworthy, come with us to Paris, where you'll step inside the gorgeous homes of the leading tastemakers in France. From the chic flat of iconic tabletop designer Marie Dodge, whose fascination of color and pattern extends far beyond her hand-painted porcelain collections, to the home of watercolor illustrator Tatiana de Nicolet, where fantasy wallpaper and garden trellises transport you to a lush tropical oasis. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Hi, Morrissey. Uh, my name is Stephanie Delpont. Welcome to my house. Hi, my name is Stephanie Delpont. Uh, I am an art director, a photographer uh, and a writer, and I live in Paris. So this is my home uh, in Montmartre. So uh, I've been living in this house for five years now. Uh, I live uh, in this house with my little dog, uh, Ferdinand, you just see here. Uh, I founded my creative uh, agency. I consult uh, uh, and uh, create um, campaigns for luxury brands uh, in the fashion and beauty sector uh, in France and uh, worldwide. Um, I am also a, a photographer. I take uh, photographs uh, of Paris and I have an upcoming exhibition next year uh, in June. Uh, it will be a urban exhibition uh, in central Paris in Hotel de Ville, so I'm excited for this. And uh, I also finished uh, this summer my first novel. Uh, it's going to be adapted on screen uh, and I'm working on the scenario of the series right now. So this is the living room. This is uh, a wooden table I found on the attics. Uh, I like the, the fact that it's very simple, it's very countryside, you know. You have a sofa. Uh, I like to have really a lot of sofa so that I can sit a bit everywhere. Uh, it's cozy. I wanted it to be very cozy because it's a living room and I wanted to have multiple sofas, you know, so that uh, we can sit a bit everywhere. Now, I like to to have friends over. I think the, the nice, nice uh, configuration is that, you know, with four friends and we can have, you know, we can sit here on the sofa, can chat, and then we can have uh, a second part uh, of discussion or dessert just here in my boudoir. So uh, I like that it's very fluid, you know, we can really move in the space very naturally. Yeah, actually this has become his couch. So it's his own panier. <laughs> yeah, it's really mainly his place. Yeah, he likes his place because it's there is two floors and so he can really live his life on the two floors. Sometimes he wants to be by himself there when I'm work, working upstairs. So it's a nice place for him. For the chairs, I like the fact that it's uh, mixed and matched. Uh, I don't like when things are too perfect, so yes, this is what I chose to to have two different sets of chairs. And so this is um, this is my boudoir. It's the place uh, where I I write uh, at night. Uh, it's a place where I read, and I also like to have teas here. You know, to have tea here with friends. So uh, how I found this house, uh, it was five years ago. Uh, it was a night of insomnia and I don't know, I typed on internet um, Paris house and I thought I would uh, find nothing. So I found this house and first 
I literally thought it was a scam, right? Because it seemed a bit unreal. And so I, I really, I nearly got panicked and I sent uh, messages to, to the real estate uh, agent. And I, uh, I, uh, so I visited it uh, the day after and I completely fell in love with the place. It was the, the house of a, of a painter, Maurice Utrillo and it's just located in front of the vine vineyard. Uh, so uh, you're really in the in countryside. You don't really understand where you are and you hear um, uh, birds sing. So also it's a very feminine house. So it has something very, uh, yeah, poetic. And I fell in love with this. So uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was love at first sight when I, when I met this house. So here it's, um, it's a room, um, it's a very literary room right, because it was made after uh, Les Fables de la Fontaine. So uh, I like that it's my literary space. So I really wanted like a very comfortable uh, sofa. Uh, this sofa is very, very comfortable. You can uh, nap here, you can just sit and, uh, and uh, read. And so, and recently I put this fabric on. I like, I like the contrast it, it gives. So I think it's interesting colors. And this house has been renovated by um, an Italian. And I like it because, you know, she put uh, mainly Italian materials like marble and even like, for instance, this, this uh, boudoir. She painted this uh, after the Fab de la Fontaine. So it's something very literary and it's also very uh, charged you know it's very uh, uh, and I like the the fact also with the molding you know uh, with, uh, with the limoulure she really recreated something very Parisian you know nearly a cliche uh, so that's that's why I like in this house to 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 put few um, uh, few furniture because it's already so dense when I arrived I was thinking how I'm gonna uh, furnish this place because I didn't want it to be too much it's already a lot right so I tried to decorate it uh, in a, a countryside uh, way something with uh, wooden tables chairs I I found on the attics you know so I, I didn't want it to be too too precise or to design design it because it would be just too much so what I like here is uh, in this boudoir you have the view on the Rue de Corto. It's a very famous street. Uh, recently you had Emily in Paris who shot, they shot a, a, movie, a scene here. So um, yes, it has been, it has become even more famous. Um, yes, it's a very serene place to be at night, for instance, because when I'm reading here, or I'm writing, I just like to have this scenery uh, of this beautiful street empty. Very nice. And I, I love to go, uh, it's Monk's house. And uh, I think it's a beautiful book. Um, you can see, you can see her house there. Where is it? Yes. She really also found a balance between the countryside. Yes, this is her place. Yes, this is her house. I really like, you know, it's very simple. But she painted everything in turquoise. So it's very simple place. So yeah, it was uh, uh, my inspiration also for this home, um, this literary place in the countryside. Um, so this is a photograph I've taken. It's going to be the the one uh, which will open my uh, urban exhibition. So you, you'll have the cover title, and this is a photos yes I've taken in front of the Sacré Coeur. This is a I like it there might be a bit of dust but I like the fact that you know I can put books and say oh yeah I forgot about this one and sometimes when I, I have a few books I would like to read I put it there so that I don't forget about them and I say I like this uh, thing a lot. I would say my style when it comes to interior design is uh, quite humble and simple. Uh, I find uh, it's poetic to be humble and to have, uh, um, yes, uh, 
I wouldn't say it's. Uh, I, I'm not uh, attracted to arrogant. Uh, you know, sometimes it's lavish or it's uh, it's uh, it's too much. Uh, I would I would feel suffocated by those interior. So uh, yeah, I like simplicity, and I think it's it's where I can live and breathe uh, the more the more naturally. If it's too sophisticated, I would feel like I'm in a hotel or I, I really like it when I go to places, but my house has to be not neutral, but simple. Like uh, uh, I could not see myself in a fancy um, with a lot of designers. I would feel it's, uh, it's too much for me. So let me take you upstairs to my bedroom. No, Ferdi. So this is uh, my bedroom. So this is the biggest uh, room of the house and uh, it's where I, I decided to put my room in because it's the place where I find the, more, the most in inspiration. Again, it, I w wanted it to be very simple, so I just took a uh, a really comfortable bed and I put a, a blanket I like and that's it, you know, it does the trick. Um, I had this enfilade, this Scandinavian. Uh, I think it's also, it has a lot of purity in the line, so I like the fact that it doesn't say too much. Uh, I always love to to live with a Ficus Lirata. I think they are always an elegant plant to have. And uh, yes, here again, this is my desk. Very simple, I, I wanted to keep it very simple. I always like, you see in my, um, uh, my office, I always like to work in front of a, a window because I always ha uh, like to have the windows always open. I always need a lot of fresh air. So I always put myself there. And also I installed um, a little garden, uh, so I have I'm working in front of plants and, uh, and trees. Um, I like to have big tables where I can put my mess because I always, I do several things at the same time. I have different um, uh, aspects to my job. So I like to have uh, all my mess around me. And also I like to be surrounded by things I created. They might not be, um, I don't know, um, uh, this is something I, I, I drew, this is a flower, drew. this is a picture I've taken, I don't know, I like even this is a, a drawing or I like to be surrounded with uh, things I create because uh, I think it's the same energy, you can draw, uh, paint something or write something, I, I like to be surrounded with that. So it's a, a, choose, uh, a choice I make, I'm not surrounded with art that is not made by me. <laughs> Maybe it might seem a bit presumptuous, but it's just my way of, of uh, getting nurtured and inspired. It's just, for instance, this is a little sketch. And again, I don't really, this is, I'm not really a good, but uh, this is my dog. This is a picture I've taken that I, I quite like. Uh, another from this, um, girl and it reminds me when I was a girl I, I looked a bit like her. This is Nikit Saint Fal. I, I really like. This is an herbier and I always like to put flowers, my flowers in it. So where are they? Yeah I say that and then we can you know I'm also I love Ginkgo Biloba so it's also my herbier. I put my uh, yeah, it's another flowers I drew. This is a typewriter I use. I type it because I, I really like beautiful paper and I really like, I like it. And I think it's a, it's a beautiful object. Recently I, I a bit used it too much so it's, it's a bit slower but yeah, I think it's the most immediate way to, you take a blank sheet of paper and you just type your thoughts or, or I would write a poem, you know, with my hands and then I would type it. So I think it's, 
it has more authenticity than just printing it. And this one I found it, I bought it. I like the fact that it's all again like florals. I love to be surrounded with flowers. My source of inspiration, you know, I grew up in the countryside in big houses, you know, mansions or so I uh, my dad has really a simple ta taste and uh, um, so I really tried to translate this countryside, you know. In a country, uh, you don't put really uh, uh, furniture that are too, I don't know, too pompous or too eccentric. You just want something very simple, right? You just want your candles, your flowers, your books. So this is my bookshelf. I like it when it's open because I like to be really surrounded with books. Um, I did a, a literary prep school, so I had to read a lot of books in my life. And these are all the books I read. I think uh, uh, books, they calm you. They put an atmosphere where you don't know really in which time you are. And also I like to buy old books, books that really had a life prior to me. I'm not a fan of buying new books. I, I, I'd rather go to the attics and just buy tons of books. And also they have this collection where they are just really be a beautiful art object. And I like the smell. I like the fact that it has been read before me. It's like you have this chain, you know, cycle and you're just perpetuating the chain. So I like, I've always bought my books second hand. Voila. This is the most sentimental book because this was the first novel I really read when I was a child. It's from Théophile Gautier, Le Capitaine Fracas. And um, yeah, it was reading that book that I fell in love with literature and I fell in love with the object of books where you can at a young age you can just immerse yourself and lose track of time and I don't know I became yeah addict to books with that book so is the culprit so this plaid uh, is the same brand uh, um, from the plaid I had downstairs in my boudoir on my sofa it's an Italian, it's Lisa Corti, and, and I think she just makes, sh she makes amazing pattern. Like, this is my favorite, it's the most colorful. Yeah, this one is, is very floral, and it, I, I love the red and green and pink. Uh, the one downstairs is more black in it, so it's maybe more elegant, but this one is, uh, and it's very, uh, yeah, I really like it in my bedroom to have that. This house is unique because um, because first of its history, you know, it's filled with history and you had um, uh, artists living there. And so you feel it. Uh, and also you feel all the artists that lived in Montmartre, right? For instance, I just live two seconds away from uh, the Musée Renoir. Uh, uh, also called the Musée Montmartre and uh, I don't know when I go there nearly every day because there is an enchanting garden I love um, you film Renoir everywhere uh, uh, it's, uh, you, you can understand why all those uh, artists gathered in this place because you have um, an atmosphere and a vibration you don't uh, have anywhere else in Paris uh, I think so, and you have Nerval, uh, the place I, I work every day, uh, it's just nearby, we'll go. Uh, you had Nerval living there. Uh, Nerval is one of my favorite poets, so you, you understand why uh, they were all attracted to this village, right? Uh, so, this is my favorite uh, room of the house. This is the bathroom. Uh, I really like the fact that there are uh, two windows in it, so it's very, it's, uh, it has a lot of light. And, uh, and also I like the fact that it has both a shower and a bathtub. 
so we tend to take baths at night uh, with the open windows and and the view on the Rue Corteau. Here I put a lot of plants too because I want it to be protected by, because there are many people, right? Um, but yes, this is my uh, my happy place. It's a place where I, I really like to be. I just like to put art. You know, this is uh, dirty. <laughs> this is a picture I've taken from my dog. But I really like, I used to be a maximalist. I used to have many products and everything out there and uh, with time I'm becoming more and more minimalist. I like when it's empty because uh, I can have more room in my head to think. I lived 10 years in a place where there were no window in the bathroom and I, as I always like to open windows I really like fresh air all the time I live with open windows even in winter uh, I would have open windows I need fresh air so having two windows is um, is a luxury here I installed a little like a garden you know suspended garden because I had to be protected from the street so now it's very serene at night you know it's uh, yeah it's a unique it could have been re the house could have been rearranged in another way right uh, maybe put just a room here and there would be the living room i don't know but it's uh yeah it's a luxury to have two windows in a in a bed in a bathroom a bathtub and a shower but it's also I always like to take this time for me you know as a ritual uh, a ceremonial to really center myself and so I really spend time in my bathroom and I enjoy to be here so the challenge uh, that uh, brings this house is that it's on two floors and it's on the uh, the main floor right so uh, it, 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 when you enter, you know, you're just coming from the street. So a first floor is not that uh, luminous. There is no much uh, light. So that's how also uh, it's mainly a floor where I'm more, uh, I, I enjoy more at night. Uh, that's why also I go and work uh, just a few blocks away uh, in my atelier because here uh, you cannot really work um, in mornings and I'm very sensitive to light. So this was the biggest challenge for me. I, I, um, it was important not to judge the space by the, the light of the first floor. Uh, the second floor is brighter uh, and it, it's a, a place I tend to go more in the mornings or afternoon, but uh, at night it's really where I I spend most of my time. So now we are uh, in the garden of the atelier I have upstairs and it's a very special place because it's really uh, an immersion in the nature and the countryside so I'll show you around. And it's just uh, two seconds from where I live so it's uh, very practical. Uh, so I found this place a couple of months ago and I, uh, it was a place I, I never been to in Montmartre. It's a very secret place and when I found uh, this uh, uh, space I fell in love. And it's very quiet because you have this uh, private garden. So uh, it's, uh, I felt I was in the countryside but here even more. It's, uh, it's a very yeah, sacred, uh, secret place. Uh, so this is my uh, uh, where I work. This is my atelier uh, just near my place, uh, and it's a it's a very calm place. Uh, uh, and we have the view in the garden, so it's a very uh, calm. And I really like it's very bright, so I love to I love to sit here and just yes, right. Uh, I like that it's very white filled with light and I like also to be surrounded with photographs or drawings or paintings I did. Um, I like the fact that it's, uh, uh, it's just on a garden so 
I always uh, let the windows open and I worked with the fresh air and the silence. So it's very, uh, uh, very nice, very kind, very yeah, smooth and uh, yeah, filled with light. It's, it was really important for me because I needed a separate place to really um, create and uh, the atmosphere here is very, yeah, it's very peaceful. And I like to have messy. I like that it's a bit messy. It's important to have a mess for me. Uh, here again, I just imagine a space where there was just one desk, a wooden desk, you know, from an architect. So no, I wanted a place where I could put my, you know, like stones, you know, I wanted my secret cabinet. So this is the the Palo Santo, uh, the candles, you know, and this is also my mess, uh, you know, with when I paint or um, all my, yeah, it's my creative uh, cabinet. It's, let's say, my recreational place. It's a place where I can do anything I want. These are my photographs. Um, so, uh, Yes, this place is very, uh, again, very literary because uh, it has a literature background because my favorite poet, Nerval, lived uh, in this uh, building. So it's a very calm and enchanting place where it's very vibrant to create. Yes, and you have the view on the Sacré Coeur. So it's a, it's a very nice place. What I love the most about the home is that this house is that I don't, I never really realize I'm in Paris. I, I, I always love to, not to know uh, uh, whether I'm in a countryside or I'm in Paris. So this is what I like is the, I'm a bit lost in translation in that place. I, you could be, you know, in Normandy or you could be, where I grew up, so that's I'm I'm the most grateful about this place is that it uh, brings me in a place where uh, I don't really know where I am. Uh, so this is my kitchen. I'm not really a cook, so I don't spend much time in my kitchen. Um, I like to eat. Uh, outside. I like to be again surrounded with plants, with art and this is a, a painting from my great great grandfather and it's funny because he drew, he drew a, a cocker spaniel and we all in the family we always have cocker spaniels. Uh, this is a book from La Cuisinière Parisienne. I never really apply because I don't really cook. And this one is a photo I like. Uh, I like to take photos in the metro. And I, I love the grace of the characters I see in the metro. And this one, yes, is um, I like the composition. So it's a photo I really have a strong uh, attachment to. Yes, I like to make tea. So this is a tea uh, that I bought it at the attics again and this one I bought it uh, when I was in um, Bali I like it's called a uh, Cisco from the Sun I like the ceramic uh, for me the house is really a shelter so it, and it has to be vibrant because if I don't feel I'm gonna write uh, or, or uh, you know paint or it has to be you know it has to put me in motion so it's not just a beautiful, serene place. It has to inspire me. Uh, thank you very much for having me today. Uh, I hope this tour of Montmartre uh, um, was enjoyable to you and uh, maybe see you uh, next time uh, when you're in Paris. Hello, home worthy. This is Tatiana. Welcome to my home.
watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hello, my name is Tatiana de Nicolai, and I work mainly with watercolor. I'm an illustrator, and you're here in my home today in Paris in the 16th district. We live here with my husband since uh, a couple of months and my little dog, it's a poodle. We, we just moved in in November and we've renovated the flat in eight months, so here we are. So I started drawing when I was really young, just as a hobby. My mother was a designer. She used to work for Pierre Cardin, Louis Ferro in the 70s. So at home, she always had a huge desk with a lot of paint brushes and watercolor, crayons, pastels. So I was initiated really early. And we used to do that on vacation um, during my childhood all the time. I just loved it. And eventually my dream was to do the Beaux-Arts, but I wasn't able to, so I went for economics instead, which was useful. And, um, and then I just learned it by myself um, and practiced. And as everything, you just need a lot of experience. So eventually I managed to uh, work for myself uh, four years ago. And uh, now it's been an incredible journey and I'm so grateful. So this flat was owned by a lady who wouldn't live there for 10 years. Uh, so it was in a very bad state. She didn't do any works for more than 50 years. So everything was to be redone, especially the bathrooms, the kitchen, etc. We didn't touch to anything on the structures of the apartment, just the one of the bathrooms just to make it bigger. Um, but the rest, we, we just took it as it is. So it's an Osmanian building with uh, the moldings, the uh, parquet, which is very typical from uh, these buildings back in the days, uh, the um, fireplaces and and everything that we loved. So we just had to refresh it and yeah, obviously do all the plumbing and electricity, which is not that fun. But then the decorating part was the most amazing um, challenge with the carpenter. Um, and we designed these wood panels behind me that remind me of a garden. And that was the initial point to start with the decoration of the flat to make it feel like a garden a tropical one um, which reminds me of all my travelings that i did when i was younger i lived in egypt in morocco in argentina in india and all of that supposedly um, influenced this flat i guess and i just wanted to have a feeling when i come in this home that doesn't feel like france and paris even though you can still have this feeling with the um, the architectural background of the flat, but just have this um, feeling of tropical and palms and beautiful wallpapers that you'll see later. We're in the entrance here. We didn't want to put too many things in objects, so it's quite uh, neutral. We have two big cupboards that we had made with these little decorations that I actually got inspired from in a trip in, in uh, Seville. And again, we had some mirrors put here and here just to give a bit of um, more space and light it just gives you a, uh, an aspect of more depth and here we have two columns um, also made out of mirror which I find beautiful and these parrots with fake um, fake candles that is always more convenient and I actually found them a couple of years ago when I used to you know live in different countries in flats that I did not own or rented. I didn't want to bring in uh, furniture that I had bought. So I was buying it little by little and I had it all stored at my parents' place. And when we finally got our own place here, I actually had a lot of things already and decided to put them here and there. So they were not bought specifically for here, but I just found the place and I think they go well here. And here we have a little bench that reminds me again of gar uh, benches that you find in gardens, especially in England. And this one was also a wedding gift. It's in, uh, in very, very heavy uh, metal. I'm going to show you the living room. Come and follow me. In our flat, we basically have everything that comes from either flea markets or auction houses or websites where you find things from second hand or objects as well that we got from our family members uh, who gave them to us or didn't want them anymore. So I always find fun to say that 
the only thing that is new in our flat are probably our mattresses and our beds. And the rest is um, found here and there. I really have a passion for flea markets, for you know, finding the gem here and there that reminds me of traveling or places. Typically in Venice two weekends ago, we found a flea market and I couldn't hold myself and I bought you know, a little souvenir that I use for my, um, my, um, my dinners. And it's just nice to have these memories of places, of people. And this is how we mainly decorated our flats. So this is a wallpaper that we got for our wedding as a gift. We were so lucky. It's from a brand called Ixel. They're based in London and Istanbul. It's all painted by hand by miniature painters in Jaipur. And it's called the D-Dream. D for Dimona, who's the designer. And dream because it's really a fantasy wallpaper. It doesn't make sense altogether because as you can see, here you have a little pheasant close to a monkey. It would never happen in a normal environment. And it's the same for the trees, the palm trees, the birds. But it just feels so beautiful and so exotic. And basically what we wanted to do is, because we've had these moldings before when we bought the flat, they were white on white. And we thought, why not put wallpaper inside just to have the effect of looking through a window. So we bought the wallpaper as a panorama. Um, and it really feels like you're looking at something through windows. I think it's, uh, it's beautiful. And they made it slightly um, crackled. I don't know if you say that in English, but it's just fake. It's just, it's just a manner of making it old and uh, yeah, it's beautiful. So here we found a fun idea to have our portraits of my husband and I, and we thought it was fun to have them a little bit discreetly behind the doors. Um, we love animals again, so they're here. <laughs> so here we have a couple of um, furniture that I got from uh, our grandmothers with my, um, with, with my husband. This one, for example, is the same as the one behind. It was completely ruined and no one wanted them. We decided to give them a second life and um, we reshaped them and uh, decided to put this velvet green to make it more cozy. Here we have um, two other sofas that I found in an auction house in Belgium and I recovered them as well in this beautiful yellow just to echo the colors of the moldings and also these beautiful chairs. This is a beautiful lamp that I got from my grandmother. Um, it's from Tommaso Barbi in the 1960s and um, it just fits very well here as it has this shape of a leaf, it's beautiful. And here we have a lamp that we got from uh, our best friends for our wedding. It has a shape of a palm tree, so again, it's just in the theme and it's green, so it's perfect. It's very original. So this sofa here was actually my grandmother's bed. She used to sleep in it in her 10 last years of her life in Paris. She had an apartment, Rue du Bac, and um, it has been covered with a fabric from Braconnier. Braconnier, which is now part of Pierre Frey. And it's a pattern that they don't re-edit anymore, sadly. Um, but it's one of the historical ones that they're very proud of. And they actually modernized it in much more vibrant colors nowadays, like in yellow and pink and blue. But this is one of the colors that I love the most. And I think it got us, you know, to inspire this, uh, this decoration for our home. We really love it and it's a great piece of memory from my grandmother. These are beautiful Sicilian um, testa di moro, as we call them. They're beautiful, they're not that heavy, but they're made all of ceramics and hand painted. They come from um, near Palermo in a little village called, um, uh, oh my God, I'm gonna remember. But they, they just look so elegant and it's the wife and the, the wife and the man together as a pair. And I thought it reminded me of us both as we got it on our honeymoon. <laughs> so these two chairs that are facing each other are my favorite tiger chairs. I found them recently um, through a friend of mine who bought them in India. I spotted them first in a little hotel and I thought to myself, this is what I need at home. It would just match perfectly the tropical vibe we have. So um, they were in a beautiful little hotel and I found the artisan who was making them in Udaipur. 
and um, he eventually told me that he didn't have any but um, after a while I found them through a friend and I love the fact that it's very old and the paint is coming off. I think this is what makes it very unique and beautiful. This is what I like about old objects is that you don't want to give them uh, a new patine or a new color. It's just the way it is. It's beautiful this way. I couldn't find the pair easily. I would find identical ones, but not the ones facing each other, which I think was, um, was essential to have them facing each other. So one day on Instagram, I found someone who was selling them and it just came from Portugal, but originally they're from Udaipur. I think what makes our home um, different and unique with a soul is that um, I tried to break most of what I have been through in my life with my traveling and my experiences abroad. Um, I think you can find things from everywhere. I have um, little objects from India, from um, from Morocco, from all my previous um, lives abroad because I've been traveling for five years before settling really in London, before coming here. And I think it's just a mixture of old and new. Old in the sense, um, things that were family objects as well. I have a lot of um, furniture that comes from my grandmother, from my husband's family. And I always wanted to give them a second life, even if they were completely ruined. Um, I just had to give them a little, uh, a little punch and it just gave them a new life. And also new, not new in the sense um, buying new things because I think the only new things we have in this flat are our beds, but buying um, new things in apps that are like Le Bon Coin or Celency, which are secondhand objects. So I think this is what makes it mostly exciting. Initially, the room was divided in two with a wall and big doors. We wanted to get rid of all that to create a sort of, still to create a separation, but with a wall of plants, which makes it more natural. And to keep this room more like an intimate room where we can read on Sundays, watch our movies and be more calm. And there it's more for our friends when they come and have dinner. So this is a typical um, wooden structure called les tris that you find in French gardens that usually are made, you know, to, to plant roses at the bottom and they help them, it helps them grow uh, towards the top. And I've seen this all my childhood in my mom's um, garden in Belgium. So I wanted to have this here. It's not usual, obviously, to have it indoors, but I found it just like a decorative idea and it's green obviously like my favorite color and it does have this sense of garden and of separation with these palm trees just right here. My first job in London was um, at Cabana magazine and I was um, asked to design um, a collection of plates so we are missing quite a few but these are um, a good example. It was called the Persia collection and it was um, displayed at the Burlington Arcade in London. So this is the charger, the main plate and the dessert plate. And it was inspired by ornamental you know, details from Persian um, aesthetics. So yeah, that was quite a while ago, but I like to hang them on the wall. So here we had this uh, built in to have a little cozy place. Um, also, usually the dog sits here. I like spending my Sundays at Marché Saint-Pierre, which is a huge market for fabrics and everything. You can find whatever you want. And I made these um, velvet uh, little details on this fabric, which reminds me of leopard. So it's, it's still tropical, but it's green. So it doesn't remind too much of the animal. And I make these myself with the little pom-poms and find these fabrics there as well. It's just a great uh, thing to do on Sundays. Here I have a collection of coffee table books, as we call them, um, but they are especially an inspiration to my drawings. So I'll show you one of them. They're absolutely beautiful. They're a recollection of uh, birds. And as I draw many birds, you can really find these beautiful, beautiful birds. And it's important for me to have these botanical inspiration for my drawings. So I always seek these beautiful books. Here we have our library because we love to read, especially my husband. We wanted to mix it with little objects, 
These are a little monkey collection from my grandmother in ceramics that she gave me um, here and everywhere. We also pull down the screen to watch some movies sometimes. And here we have, as usual, some furniture that comes from auction houses. These are beautiful heads of animals um, that are made out of copper. And the vase from Vincent Daré that I helped him to make while he did a collaboration with a brand called Oka in UK. Let me walk you through the dining room. So here we are in the dining room. Here we're in our favorite room in the apartment. Is the place where we had a crush when we first visited it. And um, we absolutely love this gray cream color that is married with this uh, blue, bleu céladon green color. We think it's very nice to keep the effect of the, um, the old, not to renovate it so much. That's why we kept it as it is. And I think it lived through everyone's lives and past tenants here because it's been made to measure to fit this room. So um, when they, the agency told us that they would take off the wall panels to, um, to put them somewhere else, we were so disappointed and we didn't want to, to buy the flat anymore. And in the end, after negotiations, we managed to keep them and we're so happy about it. It's really a charming and um, safe place here where our guests feel so comfortable. Here I always play with different table settings. So um, I change always the color of the napkins, of the table sets, of the tablecloth. And I play with what I found at the I find at the florist. So depending on the season, I choose the flowers. Now we have peonies. Um, this is gar garlic flowers. I love putting huge flowers here in, um, in these beautiful vases that I found in an auction house in Belgium. And I think green and blue always work well together with white, obviously. So as I'm not a great um, cook, I always put everything in the decoration so my guests can forget about what they're eating for a while. <laughs> so here I like to mix uh, blue and green and white, which I think are colors that go very well together. I chose to have these little bowls for starters, which are from a glass, well, crystal manufacturer called Val Saint Lambert in Belgium. They make these of every color. I have them in blue, I have them in yellow, and they're perfect for a little starter. And these plates come from uh, my husband's grandmother. They're called Oiseau du Paradis, Bird of Paradise. And you have them for every plate, every bowl, every serving plate. They're beautiful, they're hand painted. Now you can still buy them actually at the Gien uh, manufacturer, which is in Burgundy. And um, they just remind us of Pierre's grandmother. She was so kind to give them to us. I always play with these table mats that come from Casa Lopez. It's a store in Paris. They have them in every color. They're very easy to use and they give them a, a bit more fun to the table. I also have these bread plates that I made for my wedding with our initials and the date. They're made of porcelain and I find them very easy to use for bread and they, they're a great memory of our wedding. This lamp is a great um, gift from a friend of mine. They're made in near Rome by an artisan and they're actually two lamps that I've put on top of each other. And you can actually continue to build them up like this. I chose those colors. You can choose everything you want. I wanted to have this yellow for, the, um, for our living room and this, uh, this color for, to remind here. So I'm really happy about it and you can really move it easily. It's so light. And it's called, um, it's from a brand called Parana Studio. They're handmade in Rome. I think I started off by thinking about the green color, which is my favorite color. It's um, a color that I use very frequently in my drawings because I actually mainly draw animals, flowers and um, foliage. So, and that's the predominant color in nature. So I started off with green and I think when you like something, you know, and you work with crushes. I th I'm just thinking about when you buy things. It always seems to go together, even if it's so different. 
here we are in the corridor. It's a typical corridor of 16 meter long that you can find in these Osmanian uh, buildings. They're usually quite dark and quite sad and very narrow. So I wanted to find a way to, first of all, make it larger. So that's why on the left hand side, I put mirrors all the way down just to have a duplication, as we say, of, uh, of this wallpaper that I made um, specifically for, for this flat. It's 16 meters long by two meters high. And it also represents everything I love, which is nature, animals, palm trees, and obviously the green color. Every door has a frame of these uh, wooden structures, you know, that we find in French gardens called les trilles. And I've had them painted all around each door, which makes it a bit more grand, I guess. So I wanted to give a bit of warmth uh, with this warm light in this corridor and I found these uh, They're very decorative. They were not scones. I had them made into scones uh, And they're just leaves that remind me also of uh, you know tropical environments So here I have made a carpet of 16 meters long with the scalloped edges I think it's nice to have these scalloped edges that um, really break the fact that this corridor is so linear and um, I've made it in collaboration with Jaipur Rugs, which is an amazing company in Jaipur. We're continuing a collaboration for next year with a collection of seven rugs. So this was a first start. And I think the color is quite bold, pinkish. Um, it wouldn't suit everyone, but I think it gives a lot of joy and a lot of uh, happiness to this corridor. Here we wanted to have this little guest bathroom to open like a like like a cupboard basically because it's more convenient and we just decided to put um, a little fontaine uh, which is not that typical usually it's maybe meant to be outside in gardens so this was one of the challenges that i found during our our works because they didn't really want to put this here they thought it was quite difficult the fact that it was in a corner and they didn't know how to fix it to the wall and they used to recommend me some normal, normal water basins that you find in every store that are square or rectangular. But I was so, um, I really wanted to have this one here. And I think it's so charming. It just reminds me of Provence in the south of France. And here, a little recollection of some tiny little frames that I make a collection of. I don't have so many, but the plan is to have the whole wall covered. And there are pictures of us, pictures of our family, pictures of things we like, so it's nice. I'll show you around our bedroom. So our bedroom is this, um, we started off with this color. Why did we choose this color? Because it's a bit, a pinkish, uh, pinkish red color. So I found this Suzani in Jaipur again when I was traveling there a year ago. And I thought the grenades was a beautiful symbol for love and for the fact that this is our bedroom and it's, um, we got married recently. So I, I started off with the color of these grenades. I think it's, it's great to start off with something for a room. So this was my point where I started off. And I wanted our room to be also a little bit calm and not with too many patterns and colors. So I just went for, for a decoration of these moldings with the same color that you can find here again. I painted those myself on Sundays, on weekends, and also these little collection of uh, birds that I bought in India. So they also have this red color that I find very reassuring and calming. This is uh, the dog's favorite spot. And here we have two lamps that I bought also on La Redoute. Very simple lamps, but yet they're beautiful. And I think it's nice for us young people to find um, beautiful objects in very affordable uh, places as well. Also on a wall uh, console, which I thought was nicer to keep some space for the bedside table with a carafe and some books. 
So I thought it was nice to have here on this wall console that I found in Belgium in an auction house um, something else than maybe what you usually find which are porcelain um, little objects and these vases are these vase buds are just beautiful you can put whatever you want inside it's a bit difficult to change uh, but I think it's fun here we have um, the bathrobes that I design they're made out of my own drawings hand painted and they actually are the same ones that you find on my wallpaper so I think it's nice to have a wallpaper designed with the same illustrations that I have on my bathrobes. Um, they are made of velvet and silk, pure silk. So these are what I make. So here I added also a little bit of color. I thought the yellow, because it's not that sunny always, always in Paris, I thought with, it, with the light it just gives that aspect that you would have some sun inside. So I thought it was really nice to have this bright yellow and also the tiles I designed these tiles um, myself I thought I loved the terracotta star with the green color again and it reminds me of maybe Morocco I lived in Casablanca for a few years and um, it just felt like a little bit like a Moroccan um, bathroom and these are some sconces that I found also on an app called Sedency they sell a bit of everything it's called the the brocante en ligne and um, I just find that gold always well gold gold leaf or something similar gives a uh, gives so much light as well I think my style in interior design is very colorful quite bold um, eclectic and maximalist so in the sense that I would put colors and patterns and stripes and you know everything together um, also mixing old and new in a sense um, modern I mean more contemporary objects and very old ones so for example we have a bed that is actually turned into a sofa in our living room and it has a braconnier textile which is back from the 60s or the 50s and actually they don't produce it anymore or I have um, marquetry um, objects that are mixed with quite modern things so I think the mixture is great when you know how to you know put it together so here we're in the kitchen it's a typical uh, kitchen location of these Osmanian buildings and apartments so at the very end of the flat we didn't want to bring the kitchen so far um, you know in front of the apartment we wanted to keep it here it's a bit uh, dark and you don't have so much light so I wanted to bring light by using yellow again yellow that brings uh, a lot of joy and we created this uh, roof which is more like a tent and also like the rays of sunshine so it gives me joy to be in the kitchen as I'm not a great cook I just um, try to enjoy time in this room that I actually find quite lovely. So here we designed the tiles uh, again in green which is our favorite color and also to uh, remind the tree you know these wooden structures that you find in French gardens that are on here I put them on the floor and also here just, just to remind the aspect of gardens and the fact that you would feel basically in a little garden under a tent and um, here we have a little spot for the breakfast. We just sit here, it's casual, it's cozy. I had made these cushions with um, fabric from the Marché Saint-Pierre, which is a, a big market where they have a lot of fabric. And it's just um, a cozy way to, to spend our mornings with our little dog. So here we have a couple of frames. This is our wedding invitation. This is also the wedding invitation. Here it's a menu from our engagement party and this is from our engagement in France where when we did a hot air balloon trip. And actually this is basically where I took my inspiration from for the flat because it's the recurring theme. It's these uh, treillis that show the Jardin à la Française and also added with uh, obviously palm trees and uh, this tropical theme. So I think this was a great inspiration for our flat. Here is the guest bathroom, which is inspired by India. So here with the wood carpenter, we managed to kind of redesign 
um, what you find in Rajasthan in typical beautiful palaces. So it's the shape of the windows there. Um, it's again scalloped edges, but it just has this feel of India where I spent a year and a half and I loved it. We chose this blue color, which is the Bleu Majorel from Morocco because I think it's so vibrant and it's so, it reminds us all of, of Morocco. It's a tiny, tiny little bathroom, but I think it's cozy. I added these um, linen um, curtains just to have a feel of, you know, more intimacy if you want to close it, but it's just, um, it's just very tiny and cute. Home for me means a place where you feel safe, where, where you feel comfortable, where you feel happy, where it's a, yeah, it's a safe place. Um, for me, this is translated by, by colors, by joy, by um, hosting a lot of friends all the time. That's what we love with my husband. So for me, home is a place where people love coming and um, hanging out. So, and that's what they tell us when they're sitting in the dining room for hours. They say we could stay until early mornings just chatting with the candles and everything. So that's the most important for me, I guess. On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're bringing you inside the chic Parisian apartment of iconic tabletop designer, Marie Dodge. Fascinated by color and pattern, Marie's home is an extension of her world-renowned hand-painted porcelain collections. Sophisticated, luxurious, and cool. Enjoy this special episode presented by Homeworthy and Marie Dodge. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hello, I'm Marie Dodge. Welcome, bonjour, bienvenue, welcome to my home in Paris. Hello, uh, welcome at my house. I am Marie Dage, a designer for tabletop since 30 years. Uh, you are here in uh, my apartment in Paris. We are in the 8th arrondissement, really in the middle of Paris, in this very famous Osmanian uh, part of, uh, of the town. So I have a big family, I have six children. So this was a family uh, house and also my work uh, house because I had a showroom here. So we used to be eight people living here. Today my children are grown up and I just have uh, my husband and one boy with us. And then the other one are coming from time to time. Um, so the building is from the 1870, so um, it's a very lovely uh, building in, in pierre de taille, we say. Uh, we are here on the fourth floor, uh, which is, I think, very nice because we are in the sky and I have the view on the um, Toit um, of Paris. And I have a lovely view on when I am on the balcony, because on the fourth floor you have the balcony running along the, the apartment, which for me is nice because it, for me it's like having a little garden and having, um, not being in the street. You know, it maintains you a little privacy outside, which is luxury in Paris. And when I am on my balcony, I have a wonderful view on the left on the dome of the church Saint Augustin, which is a little bit like a, a Roman view because it's, a, it's the highest uh, dome of Paris. So um, the story of Maridage was really an, an improvisation and it grew up with my family. I started to do um, porcelain uh, when 30 years ago. I had some lessons with friends. Uh, and um, I never had imagined that one day it could become a job and a company like it is today. During all my childhood, in fact, um, 
decoration, table art was really in the center of, um, of the family um, atmosphere. And um, so very naturally, when I started to paint porcelain, I, I jump in the thing. Um, and for me, it was not only painting some patterns, but it was also bringing a whole lifestyle, uh, which is a very the French uh, identity of l'art de vivre à la française, uh, table art. Okay, so welcome here in my foyer. So as you see, right at the beginning, you have my identity. I am a stripe lover. So all around the place, you are welcomed by these stripes, black and white, which allows me to put lots of different color because everything is matching with black and white. Um, here, my, uh, my wishes was also to uh, enlarge the space. So as you will see a lot around uh, my house, I love to play with mirrors. Um, initially, you had this uh, little niche, which is a beautiful niche, very Osmanian, with this interesting work of wood. Uh, and on the top also you see the branches. It's a very beautiful uh, Osmanian work. And there was already this mirror. I just put it some um, lamps to, to make a little bit of dramatic decor. Uh, here I put my bird. I'm also a bird lover. It's a bird from Brazil, which is welcoming you in the house. And on the other side, I create this mirror, uh, which goes from the top to down, so that it's like a little trompe l'oeil. We have the impression that uh, the flat is going, 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 going. You have the reflection of the two mirrors, which is uh, interesting. Um, I, put, I painted in this blue, blue black, uh, not completely black, but always this subtle tone, and with this um, commode in front. This is a sculpture of a very dear friend. Uh, Marine Darcourt, you will find some other one in the rest of the house. A lot of art pieces are pieces made by friends. I love to be surrounded with what my dear friends are doing beautiful things. Um, here my little goblet, which is used as a perfume candle because I have three fragrances, all made in grass. I think it's important when you arrive in a place, you have the colors, but you have also the smell, I mean, all your sense must be attracting, the eye. I love to put music, so when you arrive, you will have the eyes with the stripes, the music, and a little bit of perfume welcoming you. So here we have two chairs, Austrian chairs, Biedermeier, very typical with this black little detail. It comes from my grandmother. Something a little bit surprising here, which shouldn't be here, it's this huge, uh, picture, this huge tableau. In fact, it's we just bought it in auction. It's the grand grandfather of my husband, which was a famous painter, and it was done for an exhibition um, in the 19th century. So this is here, but this should go in my country house. It's a little bit big here in Paris. Um, to stay in the paintings, here we have some view of the sea. This we find it in the attic, in the countryside. And in fact, it's made by a quite famous painter. So it was really a lovely discover in the attic. On the other side, I have two uh, paintings of trains, which were made by another grandfather of my husband. So it was quite an artistic family. Uh, here you see the window, the light is coming from this very, very lovely stained glass, which is a typical Osmanian uh, part of piece that you will always find in the entrance of a, of a house, which is lovely uh, turquoise and champagne color uh, pattern. I think it brings really a lovely uh, color inside. And in the night, I have some lights so that when you arrive, you, you really have this like a picture. It's very beautiful in the evening. Uh, here, uh, 
some uh, plant green because that's also typical from the 19th century. In all these apartments, you would always have these exotic trees. They were fascinated by exotism in the 19th century. Um, on the floor, I have this uh, carpet, black and white, which is from the 50s, coming from the Galerie Yves Gastou, which was really the uh, man who uh, brings the 50s uh, update and uh, famous. So this is my entrance. What I love in my job is that it's combining um, workcraft, uh, handcraft, handcraft work, uh, and thanks to this technique that I really, I'm really uh, maintaining, which is a hand-painted porcelain. This is something which is disappearing today. I think we are the only one still doing 100% free hand-painted uh, porcelain. And so it's very exciting to maintain this tradition and to be, uh, yes, to be the one who will uh, keep this alive. When I arrived in Limoges to trying to find people who can paint with me, for me, because I was painting alone and at the end it was too much. I was painting day and night, it was crazy. Um, I arrived in some little atelier and they were all closing because there were no business anymore on hand-painted porcelain. So for me, it's really very exciting to think that I maintain this tradition. Uh, the other thing which is very nice with uh, table art is that it's something which has something to do with uh, entertaining, with being together, with sharing, you see. So it's not only decoration like curtains or sofa, it's really dressing a table and being part of this important time of the life. I think in life, all important moments, like uh, meeting someone, introducing your fiancé to your family, uh, enjoying uh, because you have a successful year, so with your, all your colleagues, you are going to organize a dinner. And in the historical part, all the wars, all the weddings between queens, everything was around a table. It was a diplomatic way of showing your power, and it's a nice way also to share and to say to your family, uh, you are important for me and I'm going to spend time dressing a lovely table. From the entrance, I will bring you to a very important room for me, because this is a room where I spend during 20 years, 80% of my time. I mean, this is my office showroom. Uh, which is really a room, it was very important when I decided to buy this flat because I was looking for a space where I could work by being also at the same time in my house. This room used to be the historical dining room of the house. It's very typical again, Osmanian. Uh, the decoration of the ceiling, of the walls, of the chimney, is a typical Renaissance inspiration of the, let's say, the Loire Castle Valley uh, style, uh, with this ceiling in um, caisson, we'll say, and uh, this very amazing chimney, wooden chimney, a little bit crazy, <laughs> completely um, oversized, I think, but I love it and we are the only one in the whole building still having this chimney. So it's really a historical piece. Um, also very typical from the traditional dining rooms in the Osmanian style uh, is a bow window. Uh, because in the dining rooms you always had a bow window where they used to put some, a uh, little bit like a green garden. I think the other in the 19th, they put in these plants. So for us, it was, that, of course, fabulous to have this, because this used to be the showroom. We were also doing some shootings. So the lighting here is fantastic. So as you see here, the walls, I have dared to do them in gold. Uh, it was important for me to find a warm color. I don't know, I hate boring things, so I wouldn't have done it in gray or white, of course. But I needed something which would quite neutral and which could rise up all my palette of colors. 
So gold was ideal. And I chose here uh, this lovely gold fabric to uh, separate this part of the room with the other part where I have a little oven to experiment my colors. It's my little technical place beside. Um, so here all around the walls you have these shelves where I used to put, put all my new collection. This where the space where I have my clients coming. Uh, the, um, car the parquet, the wooden parquet, I painted it in black again to have something quite neutral. So here it's really a play with black, white and gold. You see here you have the heaters which are hide in this um, boiserie, black. I did the black frame here. Um, and black, of course, all the iron um, étagère for my porcelain. Um, here, briefly, I can explain you my concept, which is quite easy to understand here. On the, on the table, you see lots of colors. This is my palette. I have 68 colors that I all create myself. It's really like creating a perfume by mixing some colors. Sometimes there are eight, ten colors for one, for one color. And beside, I have my little oven where I taste my colors because colors can change after being heated. So this is really a work like creating a perfume. So the way it works, my concept is you have 68 colors and 90 collection, 230 different patterns. Here I have illustrated all my plates in only three very neutral colors. So this is the way to, to work. Choose your pattern, choose your colors, and you create your own set. That's all about maridage. It's really to be able to have completely bespoke sets. So, in fact, you see here, uh, the, what I have done is that I have chosen always, you can see all the plates are the same color. It's really to explain the concept. Uh, all the plates here are done in three colors, neutral colors, two shades of blue and gray. For instance, uh, when you look at a plate like this, you see, uh, you have navy, dark blue, light blue, and some gray lines. This means that you can choose three colors. And so this plate can become a plate like this. So here, what I have done is that I have chosen some pink, some green, and some gold. And it gives me a plate like this. Uh, this plate could be like this. Here, my client, you have chosen some orange, some celadon, and some brown. So depending on the fabrics, on the style of the house, I will really make exactly bespoke collections for the client, which is fantastic because it allows everyone to become very creative. That's why my designers love to work with us because they can offer to the client something so much personalized. It's really so important. And so you have your own set matching to your house, which is something that you couldn't have if it was printed. You see this plate, for instance. Uh, again, three colors have been chosen. We have chosen some green, we have chosen some blue, and we have light up the middle with some red. This could be in gray and black, and the look will be completely different. So there are as many possibilities as your imagination can, could imagine. And I love when it's a little bit borderline, so this uh, concept allows to do some very daring uh, sets because they will they are all individual so it's it's great it's fun so here we are in the sitting room sitting room is looking in the roads and you have the balcony uh, all along the the flat uh, this room used to be a double room here when i arrived there was a hole here so you could go in the other room and there were these two double doors 
on both sides, which was a little bit strange. I think that historically here there was a glass door, but which has disappeared. So I decided to put this big mirror. It's a traditional way of doing mirrors in Mercure. That's why you have all these little spots, but it it makes it more interesting and it's a nice link with the old mirrors which used to be already in the flat on top of all chimneys. So here uh, this mirror, traditional mirror, were already, it's part of the building, so uh, 1870. I didn't change anything, it was gold like this with this interesting uh, grey painting uh, around. So you see a lovely wooden work uh, all around the, the mirror. Uh, as we are in the ceiling, uh, one thing which I loved also a lot in this apartment is the sophistication of the work of stuff, stufo we say. Um, you see on the ceiling there are all these uh, volute plaster work, um, which is again really the Osmanian style. And on the top of all the doors, also a very beautiful work of um, flowers and branches. Uh, I try to really rise them up by leaving all this framing of the doors in white. As the walls, I choose this color which I create. Uh, it was, I spent quite a lot of time trying to find this color because I didn't want that it becomes palm or brown. So it's a mix of lots of different colors. Um, that I create, in fact. It's a kind of, uh, we call it marron glacé. Very often, when I try to find a color for my walls, I go from my palette of colors. So this would be my color number 14, because all my colors have got some numbers, which is marron glacé. And I like very much this color because it allows you everything around. You can put pastel colors, dark past colors, it always works. It's a very easy going uh, background color. So in this room, you will find thousands of different colors. So I really dare to mix everything because I think as long as the colors are subtle and interesting, you can mix them as many as you want. Um, as I'm here, beside the chimney, I decided to do these two uh, banquettes which are some, can be open, so you can put lots of books inside, magazines, and, and I did these um, uh, pillows in uh, this uh, canvas um, fabric with very shocking uh, pinks, which will, in fact, quite contrast with, uh, you will see, uh, my for instance, my carpet, which is not at all the same family of colors. But it doesn't matter. As long as the color is beautiful, it will be, it will be okay. You see here you have very feminine and shocking pink color. And in fact, my carpet has much more brown, um, uh, burgundy, more masculine colors. Uh, but it works. It's a beautiful work of iron, of its Irish um, iron uh, carpet. And as it's handmade, you have very subtle tones, which allowed to make the link with more shocking colors. For the sofa, I have this two enormous sofa. You can sit inside and you can read and you get fall asleep very quickly because it's so comfortable that it's like being in a bed with uh, all uh, the feathers. <laughs> um, the table is very big. I like when you have a very generous uh, table uh, because sometimes also you may have some little uh, 
spontaneous little dinners when I was, this is a table that I have since 30 years. I made it done, it's in iron. And when we were young married in our little flat, we had already this huge table and we didn't have any dining room. So we used to have our dining sitting on the floor and being around this table. It was our dining table. Um, it's modern, it's simple, so it can be really mixed with all my more traditional uh, Furniture. Uh, here you have two uh, Louis XV uh, bergères. Uh, as you see, the fabric's completely different, but it doesn't matter. It mix. Um, this come from. Um, this is coming from Istanbul. Uh, some are coming from India. This is a Piafre one. It's an inspiration of uh, of uh, this Uzbek uh, pattern. So it's always, I like when I travel to bring back some little souvenirs so that when I'm in my house, I keep on traveling. In front of the chimney, you have these two little poofs, which I love, very convenient when you have a, a dinner, when you are entertaining, because you can sit like this, you can sit like that, you can bring your poof and have a conversation on the side. I hate when there is a big circle and only this big huge circle. I like when you can move around and have some uh, conversation all around the, the room. This is a beautiful sculpture uh, from Chiparus. I bought it in auction. I love auctions. So I like auctions because you go there and you never know what you are going to bring back. Sometimes it can be some birds or a chair or a lamp. This time it was this woman, which is, uh, you know, protecting her from the wind. She, I think she's very feminine. You know, my auction passion comes from my childhood. Uh, my mother loved antiques and I spent a lot of time with her every time we were coming to France uh, in auction. It was in Orléans, in Paris. And I remember the excitement of doing this and saying, oh, shall we get the thing or shall we not get the thing? And it was so fun because you never know really what you are going to end to have at the end of the day. So this is fun. And also my, I, I love antiques because my mother in Martinique was, I think, the first woman who get interested in colonial furniture. The English island had a lot of beautiful furniture, but the French one, people were not interested anymore in colonial furniture. So she used to go to Barbados, to Domingo, and to buy some completely broken things sometimes and to bring them back to Martinique and to have them restored. So all my childhood, I was following her and going to, to this man who was restoring the furniture. So really, um, old furniture is also part of my, my childhood. On both sides of the chimney, you have these two uh, tempera, which are stones. In fact, it was painted in, uh, in the US. It's a friend, Arnaud Donnet, who did these two paintings. Um, I like the, um, these white shades that they bring and this warm atmosphere they bring, and very nearly abstract. Um, here, Another bronze work from my dearest friend Marine Agialo, the same as the one in the entrance. So this idea of being surrounded by friends. So for the curtains, uh, I love this silk uh, color, uh, green, gold, uh, which can be really a good link with um, all the colors of the room. I want to show you really these details of the windows because these are really very, very beautiful um, work uh, in bronze that you don't find anymore in all Osmanian flats. So this is really something also which attracted me a lot when I saw this. And I did them, I keep the gold here and here it's painted in uh, what we call cul de canon. It was really the way to do it in black like this. Um, moving a little bit more here, you know, I like also very much finding pieces and reinterpreting them. So these were very simple vases that I transformed in as a lamp with these branches that I painted in orange to give the impression of, um, of coral. So it was a funny way to create some lamps. Um, the orange is linked with this lovely photo 
which is also a piece of art made by uh, a friend. And here a little bit of ethnic remember of some African travels that we did uh, with my husband. So I like when it's sophisticated, but you know, not too uh, too sophisticated that you think, oh, I'm not daring to sit on this seat, I'm not daring to, to, to touch because it's oh, all so perfect. It has to be spontaneous, you know, cool. Uh, and like, it's obvious, it's beautiful, but it's, it's everyday life uh, and we live with beautiful things and we deserve it and we don't have to be scared of, you know, of that. <laughs> it's the same thing with my porcelain. I always say to people, don't keep your lovely porcelain in the, in the cupboard. Use them. You deserve to use it. Life should be with beautiful things. Uh, and like a flower bouquet, you don't need to have a huge uh, flower bouquet with very sophisticated flowers. Just go uh, in, the, in the garden, just go in the countryside and cut some flowers next to the ro road, some wild flowers, take some wild leaves from the trees and put them in a bouquet, and that would be the most beautiful bouquet. Don't need to go to the very expensive flower shop. So here we come back to my mirror. Uh, these two huge um, trees are in iron. I bought them in a salon. I thought I would put them on the chimney because it was in a big, big hole. I didn't have any idea that they were so big. When I arrived here, I said, oh, they are not going to be on the chimney. They are going to be on the floor. But it's like, it's like a green garden. And here, a painting of my husband. He's very proud of his painting. Here, a little bit of a wild atmosphere with my African mask, my Austrian grandmother. And here some sand of our travels in the desert. And this, uh, again, my goblet uh, as a perfume candle, because as I told you, I think in each room, you, it's important to have a little bit of also your nose being uh, interested in something happening. Um, my big uh, piano, uh, demi queue, very big, it takes a lot of space, but you know, it's important to have uh, a good sound and here it's more your ears which are going to be attracted. I have a son who is a very good piano player and who is creating some music so it's very nice in the evening sometimes when you do cocktails when he was younger and he wanted to have a little bit of money I, he used to play you know he was just sitting and play what was coming in his head and play some music for the friends which I think it's also fun. Here you have a big vase, maridage vase, in Sacre de Caille, uh, in this interesting work of brushstroke. And just some branches, you know, I think nothing nicer than big branches. I remember when we were coming back from weekend with my children, they were always uh, complaining because the car was always full of branches. So they have all the branches in the head. And at the time we were living at the fourth floor with no lift. So we were, ca and my husband also was complaining because we were carrying the children, the luggage, the branches, uh, all the little animals coming out of the branches. But you know, I, it's very important for me. When I'm in the countryside, when I arrive in my house, I open the, the volet and first thing I do is to go around and cut branches, branches to put in all the pots. And then I can think about what do we have for eating, is there something in the fridge or not, but important first branches all around the place. So you see here, I want really to show you the details of the doorknobs, which are really beautiful work. You have this olive leaves uh, work with this little, um, all this work you see with the branches, with the feuille d'accord work. It's really a, really a beautiful work. And this I really uh, wanted to maintain. I was lucky because it was already with this original gold. It has never been painted as it's very often, unfortunately done. People paint that in white because they, say, they find that gold is too, I don't know what, because they want to make it modern. And so here we really have the original uh, gold bronze work which is really something um, very valuable for me. And 
all, all the work from the top to the bottom is really from the origin. And on the doors panels, you have again this lovely work of uh, wood. So this is the lucky thing when you are arriving in a flat in an apartment of this period of Osman, because all the all the beauty of the ceiling, doors, windows is there, and it's part of the history of the flat. So um, I think that's important to to keep. So here, my balcony, my little uh, garden, Parisian garden, uh, with this very lovely view on the church, Saint Augustin, which is the highest dome of Paris, with a cross on the top. I, I love this view, it's a little bit my Roman view, Italian view. So on the balcony, um, this is full of sun in summertime, so it's really nice. And when there is too much sun, uh, we just put a little bit of the store, so it gives the impression to be a little bit at home outside, which is nice. So this is a city room. So let's say we are entertaining. We just had a nice uh, aperitif, and now the show is starting. So I say, everyone, c'est servi. Venez à table. And we open the doors. The room where things happen, where we will entertain, where we will have exciting conversation together, and we will spend a very unique time with friends and family. So this room, as I told you before, used to be linked with the room we just saw. Because here, again, I have this big uh, frame, which were empty. And here I decided again to put some mirrors um, to have this lovely reflection between the different mirrors. I use the same old technique mirrors with all these little uh, dots of uh, mercure. But here, as you can see, instead of having the iron lines, I have just this uh, lovely iron uh, bouton, uh, which will uh, make the intersection of the, of the mirror. So it's another way to cut mirrors and to interpret them. Um, on the other side, the same chimney, because you remember on the other room, here it was open, so before you had these two chimneys looking at each other. It's exactly the same chimney as in the other room. It's exactly the same mirror, gold and gray, than in the other room. Um, on the chimney, I have this, my uh, vase, my Athena vase, in the Panache collection, with this lovely work, brush stroke work, which can remind some, uh, some feathers. Here it's in uh, this blue-gray uh, tones and around candle. You will see in this room that there are candles everywhere. I find when you have a dinner, it's very important to have a very gentle and soft lighting because everyone looks so much more nice when you have the lighting of the candle. So everything I can find where I could put a candle, I will use them. I will show you after. So here I have all these glass candles, which I think are nice because in front of the mirror, it, it plays with a reflection of light, with transparency of mirror and glass. So we have here six candles in different heights, making a, a lovely uh, decor of in front, uh, around the, um, the vase. Uh, on both sides of the mirror, uh, this gravure de en Martinet, which was a very famous 18th century um, naturalist painter, and he was specialized in birds. So this is a collection, I find them in Alexandria, in Egypt, where I used to live with my husband when we were just young married. 
Um, the walls are painted in this soft green, again a color that I have created on my own, mixing some powders because you know I think that's already the way to find the subtle green I want to have. Green is also a quite a traditional color for dining rooms in the French dining rooms. When you go to visit some castles, you will often see this uh, vert uh, amand, we call it, almond green uh, in the dining rooms. Here on the wall, um, I create this, I put these little shelves, which are a fantastic way to change the decor because depending on the season, because depending on the mood or what I have under my hands, I will change what I put on my shelves. I never, it's always change, always, always, always. Sometimes you may have flower pots with flowers when it's spring. Sometimes you may have more winter decoration. Sometimes it's blue, gray like here. Sometimes it's orange, yellow. I mean, this can always change. I think in the dining room, it can be really more a theatral atmosphere. So this decor has to move, has to change, like you will see on the table. This is really interesting. So here today, today uh, I have put some uh, plates uh, of my uh, Jardin Dudaipur collection with these cute little birds ready to fly away and in the middle my jars in my iconic uh, Transat collection stripes in this uh, snake green and grey uh, shades and what I love to do also always this lighting because I avoid to light my central light so full of little uh, lighting um, spots with the little candles. Here I have a um, silver, uh, old uh, Louis XVI uh, chandelier. Uh, on this buffet, this, the story of the buffet is fun because I find it in the street. It was um, thrown by someone. I guess this must have been a furniture which were used in some traditional shops. Uh, because behind you can see some shelves, so I think the man who was selling was beside, behind this and it was um, a shop uh, furniture. So I just painted in the same color of the wall so that it's really like an architectural um, element. I keep the wood like it was, I didn't paint it. Uh, on the top you have this um, centre de table, we call it. Uh, also very typical 18th century with the mirror and this work of uh, balcony all around. Um, here are my little uh, teacups, I will show you, not for tea because here we have a dinner but they can be used for other things. Um, this is my uh, serviteur, uh, foot stand, which is a traditional shape that you could find in all the traditional sets. I know in the countryside I have thousands of these in the cupboards because it thinks that all the plates get broken, but these you still have them. So um, I did them now in my modern um, decor. It's also something that sometimes, here I use it with fruits, which is a traditional way to use them, but I use it also sometimes to put some candle on top, you know, these big round candles. It can be also a nice way to, to bring light uh, in the middle of the table. So it can, this can become a candle holder, like it, everything. So here, um, this very lovely uh, piece of furniture that I find in auction, and I couldn't not buy it because it's Austrian, in fact. Um, it's, you know, it's painted with this, uh, I think it's a little bit of humoristic. And um, it's a good way to show uh, my collection of carafe, crystal carafe. Like on the chimney, I love the play of transparency, of glass, of crystal and, uh, and mirror. Uh, in front you have this lovely uh, biscuit work of little uh, boy putting a needle out of his feet and on the bottom also a lovely um, biscuit work. 
So this is also very convenient when you put, want to put some uh, dishes or uh, because when we have dinner, we bring the food in the dishes, of course. We don't bring it directly in the plate. So it can be a place where to put uh, dishes. This is a very beautiful Baroque piece, Apotheker, Apotheker uh, Tabernacle Kasten, we call it in Austria. And it comes from my grandmother. So it's something uh, from the 17th century, so it's quite rare. It's a very beautiful work of uh, paneling, of uh, different wood panels. Also, I want to show you my favorite little cup, completely broken, but which inspires me a lot. It's really part of my love with porcelain. This comes from my grandmother, Austrian grandmother. And... Um, in Austria, you really also have a very strong tradition of porcelain. And I love the very modern uh, way of painting this thing with black and with this tie-dye uh, work of uh, hand-painted. A beautiful hand-painted work. As you can see, it has got a long story. <laughs> it has been fixed up several times. Uh, let's, so this would be maybe my little uh, totem piece. <laughs> So now uh, we arrive in the centre part of the room and of the house, let's say, because it's a table. Um, I used to have a very traditional English uh, mahogany table, which completely break down. When dinner, uh, it, it falls down because I know I think the food were a little bit damaged. <laughs> and so it was a big drama. So, um, and in fact, it was good luck because it was a good opportunity to change and to do something that I always have wanted to do is to be able to have two tables or one table. So I made, um, I asked uh, Iron Craft man to uh, build these two tables. They are very simple, very modern, very... You know, you shouldn't really notice them. It's because the star here is not the table. The star is what is on the table. So it's, I wanted to them to be black, so very neutral. I did some, um, it's a shiny black, so it's not too much um, sad. I mean, it, it has a reflection of the light also, and also of the walls. So it's not like a black hole, you see. Uh, it's also not really a color because it's a reflection of lots of different colors. So what is fantastic with these two tables is that I can have lots of different options of organizing my dinner. There are two identical tables. They are not completely square. They are a little bit rectangular. So I can choose to be either a little dinner, eight people, or six people, so I would be just around one table, and this will remain free. We can be 12, so I will put the two tables together. Generally, when I put the table together, I put a big uh, tablecloth on top, so it will be, look like more, you know, the traditional countryside table. Very nice when you have a big family dinner. And if we are a lot, like 16, I find it very nice to have two separate tables, like I did today. Today I did 6 and 6, so 12. Because I think it's nice sometimes to be able to have a general conversation. When it's a big table, you generally speak with your two neighbors. But you don't have a general conversation, which sometimes you would like to have. Even more if I decided that this evening I want to introduce this guy with this woman and this and this. So it's nice when they can speak together. So it's more intimate to have uh, two tables. They have chat together during the aperitif in the sitting room. And now they are going and I can choose who I want to speak with who. Because I'm going to put them, I'm going to put this woman next to this man so that they have to speak. Because very often when you arrive, you are going to speak with the people you know. And the people you don't know, you don't speak with them, which is a little bit sad because at the end of the dinner, I wanted that this guy meet this guy or this woman and they have him speak. So during the dinner, I can decide who is going to speak with who. So on a table like this, you can really have interesting uh, common conversation. 
So that is a little my strategy uh, on the table. So generally, I will uh, I decide, of course, who is sitting next to who. Uh, as you know, the French etiquette, there are two different ways of dressing a table. The hostess and her husband will be at the two extremes of the table. If you have a big table, this is the English way of uh, presider. And the French way will be, when you have the two tables together, to sit one in front of the other on this side of the table. The more important person on the right of the hostess. It may be someone who has never came to you. It can be the older one. Um, you know, you decide who is the more uh, important person. And then you put, of course, woman, man, woman, one around the table. Um, so here I decided to do two tables of six and um, you will see that on these two tables there are two different color stories going on. Uh, here we are more in the purple, blue um, shades and red shades. And here, on the other table, we are more in the green aubergine colors. So in this room, you have a big family of chairs uh, from very different uh, um, countries. So this is, I had a full set of 10 chairs. These are Austrian chairs that I found in auction. I, did, I bought them to put them in, my, in the mountains, in my chalet in the mountains. But I find that they were really fun in Paris. A little bit unexpected to have this very rustical Austrian chairs, more uh, paysan, you know, uh, farmer chairs. And I, I find they were fun in this uh, room. And here, more English, traditional English uh, chairs. And on the side, uh, Austrian, uh, Biedermeier, chairs. So you really have uh, the whole world here. It's very international here yeah. and very different styles from the most sophisticated uh, to the more rustical. And it works. This was a gift of my mother when we were young married because for my mother, as I told you, everything which is around the table is very important. So she gave us this traditional English table that we break, <laughs> uh, but the chairs are still there. And this chair, the Austrian one, come from my grandmother in Austria. And this, I bought them in auction, in a very little uh, auction house. Uh, I was, we were having a weekend by some friends in the um, north of Paris. And we went to this auction just for fun. And suddenly I saw these chairs and you can't believe them. I bought them seven euro the chair. Shh, don't tell it. It was really amazing. This house, I bought it 20 years ago. Uh, I wanted to be in the 8th arrondissement because, as I told you, my grandfather used to be not very far from here. And for me, as a child, Paris was like the wonderland. And uh, I was always attracted by this part of Paris, which is near Parc Monceau, which is really the Osmanian part of Paris. So 20 years ago, I was looking for an apartment. I was expecting my sixth child, so we need to be to have a bigger house. And also, uh, linked to my family was my job, and I wanted to have a space in my flat to work. I always wanted to be to be able to be at home. So it was challenging to find a place where I could have a big place, big room to put my showroom, which were a little bit separated from the family part of the flat. So when I visited this flat, I really had what we call a coup de foudre. And I fell in love with, um, with all the details which are part of the uh, structure of this flat. Um, as well as the ceilings, as the doors, the windows. Uh, it's a typical Osmanian flat, which means that uh, when you have, you have the entrance and a big corridor, at the beginning you have all the uh, rooms for entertaining, big rooms. Um, first one 
dining room looking on the courtyard, which is very typical Osmanian. And then the salon, the sitting room, which is a double, which used to be a double sitting rooms, uh, looking in the street. Then all the bedrooms and at the very far end of the corridor, the kitchen. Because at the time you had plenty of maids which were helping. So I know a lot of people in Paris now are moving the kitchen next to the dining room. I didn't do that. I keep all my bedrooms because I need all these bedrooms and I keep the kitchen at the very far of the corridor. So it's true that when we have dinners, we run in the corridor to bring the things. That's, I, but I, I find it nice to maintain it as it was. <laughs> What I think is very important when you are designing, when you are decorating a place is to maintain um, the atmosphere, the historical atmosphere and to bring your identity and a little bit of modernity. So I hate when it's too much deco, matchy, uh, obvious. I love when it's a little bit borderline and so the colors that I have chosen, for instance, in the sitting room, it was 20 years ago that I chose this color. It was, I wanted to find something which were a little bit of traditional, but also modern, not too, not too invasive, but still there. So it's always this balance between um, doing something which is really uh, new and keep the spirit of the of the space the inspiration is is really very uh, spontaneous it's a lot of also of pieces of furniture carpets that i find and i fall in love with them so i just i think when each piece has its own identity and is beautiful everything can be mixed together there are no rules Okay, so let's go in the rest of the house. So here it's my big corridor. It's also something I really loved when I visit this house because it's very rare to have such a large corridor in the Osman uh, buildings. Generally they are much more narrow and they are very dark. What is nice here is that you have this window at the end, this square window, because I am the last building of the street and that's why I have this light coming in, which is very rare. So here you see the stripes. Stripes is like being in the, in the forest, in the forest of stripes. Uh, here I have these two uh, furniture, which are very convenient to put all the porcelain and tablecloths and, you know, candles and all what you need to dress a table. Um, these big uh, maps of Paris, I found them in the attic in the countryside and we decided to paint the frame. We did that when we were young married. <laughs> and it's, you see there are some addresses, some roads, and all these roads were roads where we used to live or where our grandparents were living or where we meet or where was our school. So they all have a little meaning. So it was really fun. It's a little clin d'oeil, I would say. <laughs> So these are two uh, gravures of uh, Italian houses, but the f fun little thing is that the frame I made it, uh, it was 30 years ago, when I was doing, as I told you, my marble on frames, on porcelain, on walls, everywhere. <laughs> so now I show you my bedroom. I wanted to have something very warm, very intimate. So nothing better than putting fabrics on the wall because it's always bring, it cut also the, the loud, it's nice. Uh, this is a Pierre Fray fabric. It's an inspiration of this 18th century, 17th century even patterns. Um, this pink red, I find it very warm. Um, I have combined this quite geometric pattern with this braconnier fabric. It's one of my favorite ones. When I was not even married, I thought always one day when I will have a house, I will have 
the grand corail pattern. And this is the grand corail. It's really this Persian uh, fabrics, which I absolutely adore. Um, so for the back of the bed, I made this a bit baroque um, piece. Um, on the curtains are the same fabric as this. In fact, these used to be some curtains that I had in my first flat, just young married. And um, I bring them here in my bedroom. And as I have three pairs of curtains, I decided to make a baldaquin. The story of this baldaquin is fun because uh, this iron piece was at the beginning not at all meant to be a baldaquin. Um, I did it for uh, the Figaro, the magazine Figaro. They had a subject uh, where they asked to design us go to the flea market in Saint-Ouen, buy things and transform them. And that's what I did. So this was a flat iron piece. It used to be this iron decoration on the outdoor of the windows in old houses. So I took them it and asked to uh, my iron maker man to do this baldaquin. And I put my third curtain to have a baldaquin. So it ends like this. So these are really my very iconic first uh, fabrics. I break my uh, birth to buy them when I was young married because it was braconnier, very expensive. So, but you know, for me, Fabrics is so important, and you see, they deserve because they are 35 years old and still so beautiful. Uh, so here again, we are on the street. So we have the view on the balcony in springtime. You have a lot of green, so it's nice because it brings a little bit of intimacy. You don't have the neighbors in front of your eyes. Um, on the floor, as I, again, I wanted to have something warm. I put a wall-to-wall -wall carpet, a milleret, so you have a lot of shades of colors, which is uh, interesting. The two armchairs are armchairs of uh, uh, Louis Philippe, with this fish pattern here, with a more empire um, silk fabric. Um, the chimney is very cute. Of course, it's part of the flat. Uh, it was already there since ever and ever with this lovely, funny work uh, of faience here. Um, the mirror also, authentic mirror, was here already. Uh, besides the mirror, I have these two appliques. This may come, I bought them in a um, flu market, but they may come from a church. This is a typical church uh, pieces. Uh, on the top here, you have a little family of uh, gravures, all showing some um, Egyptian landscape. Uh, it's, a nice, it's a remember of my first two years of uh, young married. <laughs> uh, we were living in Alexandria and spending a lot of time in the antique. There were some antique shops, and so we bought a lot of things there. And so it's all a story about Egypt, about the pharaonic uh, period. A typical uh, campement, you know. Uh, this is a view of Cairo. Um, here you have some uh, battles of Napoleon period, some uh, pharaonic uh, view. Here you can see Napoleon when he did his campaign in, uh, in Egypt. And this is a map, and we were living in Alexandria on the Mediterranean Sea. To stay in Egypt, this very old carpet, a little bit very, very old, but it's also part of, uh, of my heart because it's, I think, the first, one of the first things we bought also. We invest. It's a very old carpet. We bought it to the old woman who was selling this. So as it's so old, we keep it on the bed. <laughs> For the lamp here, you have this antlers. It's an Austrian uh, lamp um, with this tartan shade. A little bit strange, but you know, I'm not afraid to mix things. 
here are books, books and books, because, you know, it's important to have your books uh, with you, even when everything is on internet, we need books. Um, on this furniture is a, a gift of my mother. Uh, it's called a semenier, uh, because you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven draws, like the seven days of the week, semenier, semaine. Uh, it's uh, empire style with a column. No, there's a lovely work of uh, bronze, and off top a uh, sleeping woman. So here we create this uh, library um, because this was a door initially uh, going to the dining room. So we wanted to make it uh, to close it to, to really separate the, the the bedroom from the from the dining room. We painted dark red in the beside and we keep the white um, frame around. It's always nice to have dark uh, shelves, I think. Uh, here we arrive on this um, piece of furniture. It was a gift for my husband. Um, it's uh, called a Bureau Cylindre. It's a Louis XVI and it's very, very convenient to hide the whole mess that you can put here. So, you know, it's better to close it. <laughs> I, when I, when I'm here, I think it's very warm and happy. Um, and I feel when you come here, you know immediately that you are in Paris, you see. I hate these flats uh, where, for instance, people will destroy every old thing because they want to have a modern thing. Or this, when you don't know if you are in New York or in Madrid or I don't know where. So I think it's really important to feel the identity. And I love Paris. And so when you arrive here, you can immediately see that you are in Osmanian flat. Um, and I think you feel, you feel comfortable. You have big sofa and, and you, you can, you know, you can really sit well and don't think that you are you know, disturbing something, destroying something. It, it's, it's a happy family uh, house. So here we have the heater, hided heater with the stripes, black and white. The map of Paris, very important when you go out to be able to show. It was important before the iPhone, now we don't use it anymore. But. Okay, so now we are in the kitchen. Uh, when we arrived, it was very simple, uh, this very strange size of kitchen. I couldn't say what geometric pattern it is. Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, coin, <laughs> corners. Uh, it's also something that you will see very often in the Osmanian building because it's really the end of the building being linked with the next one. So, um, I wanted to have two spaces in the kitchen. One space where we could have a dinner. As you have noticed, we are here very far from the dining room. So, I must admit that even if I love lovely tables, I will not have all my meals in the dining room, but a lot here when we are just family. Um, so, I wanted to have a nice space where you could have uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, when you don't have a dinner guest or when it's not a Sunday lunch. Um, so, we cut it the room with this um, piece of furniture. Everything was uh, made by order by a Belgian company. Um, we wanted to keep something traditional look because again, I think it's important to, to respect the style of the construction. Um, but we bring some architectural elements which make it more interesting. So all these pieces, we have added them uh, because it was really a very simple, there was no, nothing on the top, no, no, all this corniche didn't exist. Um, the doors were very simple, so we added all the uh, woodwork here on this door also in order to make the room more um, sophisticated. And 
we uh, played with all this um, furniture, with these um, doors, which some are plain, some are with um, glass, so that you can see inside. And we put some lighting, so that, you know, when you have lovely, like, glasses, it's nice. It's, it's, it's open a little bit the view. So we played with these different panels and here you see you have the lattice uh, which make it less plain than if it were completely uh, white. I wanted to warm this room and so I chose this very deep red um, like um, browny red and I wanted to give it a little bit of a country style so on the floor I put this stone it's um, Pierre de Bourgogne uh, really uh, in the old way of cutting the stone so very irregular like you have it so I create this uh, funny bench very convenient because you can put lots of things inside and it reminds me really the Austrian style with this way of cutting the wood, very baroque, and the stag on top, which are also reminding a little bit country, mountains. Um, the lamps are more modern. I like the contrast with these shiny silver lamps. Um, the table is a very rustical country table with a bang, branch. Uh, in black painted, um, so it's a play of white, black and red. And here you have a lovely uh, painting that of a friend, uh, Donadieu, who is painting on very old papers, you know, that he finds, a rubbish paper, and he makes this uh, very interesting uh, work of pastel, um, aquarelle, um, painting, with inspiration of antique uh, stories. So here it's really uh, the technical part of the kitchen where you work. Uh, so there is a view on the courtyard. And um, for uh, the plan de travail, I use some what we call la pierre bleue de, Bel de Belge, Belgique, this blue stone of Belgium. Um, I like because it's uh, very natural and you have a lot of motif uh, on the stone and um, for the wall here behind the heater I have some zelige, black zelige, very rustical. Here you can see my cash pots, always important, you can put flowers but you can put also all the kitchen things. So here it's again this idea of countryside, it's really this buffet that you have in the old kitchen. Uh, where you can, you know, storage a lot of things and um, I like it because it's, uh, it's, it's like nearly like a furniture, like an old furniture. And it makes a link between the technical part and this part which is more like a little, let's say, dining room. Um, here on the table I put my Verdure collection with this lovely red which reminds the, the walls. Here we have, uh, we'll have a dinner with a little bit of soup with a carrot plate. Um, these are the typical little um, pieces to put. It, it used to be to put the carafe, but it can be used for butter, for whatever. The little flowers again, the goblets, which can be used for water or whatever. My coupe Christophe for bread. So this is a very traditional old shape uh, of the Limoges uh, porcelain. Uh, you, I, I use it also sometimes to do some bouquet, some uh, low bouquet. Here it's convenient for bread. Um, and here is this little uh, teacup, Japanese teacup, which is of course with a little candle waiting to be lighted up. Because even a little dinner with only uh, everyday dinner, I like to light a bullet, a candle. It makes a very common dinner being a little bit special. So that's important. And here my Murano 
Marie Brandolini glasses. I love. So ready for a little family dinner and here some branches, you know, again, I was in the countryside this weekend, so poof, 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 we cut some branches and we have a little bit of nature arriving in the city, which is quite important when you are living in Paris. So this home is a lot of uh, memory of my family house with six children, my, ha my business, mixing both things. Sometimes it happened funny things because, you know, when I had my clients coming here, my designers, uh, as I'm in the luxury part, it was very more high-end people used to very sophisticated things. So we were, I remember, we were in the, uh, in the showroom doing my, my show with these uh, clients and suddenly a baby arrived and said, Mommy, I'm finished. <laughs> So it was always this uh, mix of uh, my business, which is really part of my life and that I love. My children grew up in the porcelain, you know, the, and, and this family life. So really this mix, which is also very important because as I say, uh, tabletop is really has a lot to, say, to do with the private life of everyone and uh, the um, art de vivre and you know the entertaining and the food the cooking so it's not only decoration it's not only colors and patterns it's a lot more so now we are at the end um, I show you my house where we are having lovely times with the family where I used to work also during 20 years a big space of inspiration here I hope you enjoy I enjoy to share with you my little secrets and my passion as you may have guessed the passion of table the enjoyment of being really part of the haute couture de la table, um, you know, sharing l'art de vivre uh, à la française with you. Goodbye. Bonjour and welcome to Chateau Garrow. I'm Garrow Kedigan, New York City interior designer, and I'm so excited to share with you my fabulous Parisian pied-à-terre. Come take a look. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. I have loved Paris ever since I was a child. We used to come here all the time. My brother lived here for a while and I used to visit. And um, I always said I would have an apartment here. And uh, as I became a uh, designer in New York City, I would bring clients shopping here quite often. And uh, it was really only uh, after the pandemic that I thought, you know what, uh, it's time to, time to get a place here. Um, so I started my search. It took a while to find and uh, I was so thrilled when I walked into this apartment I saw exactly what I was looking for. I had seen a lot of apartments in Paris and uh, you know it's a, it's, a, it's a fairly interesting city even though the architecture here is beautiful. Um, the buildings are kind of awkwardly shaped and, and I'm like a, a total classicist and I love symmetry and I love um, you know, architecture. So, you know, the interiors for me really needed to be very structured. And it was hard to, to find an apartment that really fit that bill. So the minute I walked in the door here, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is it. Oh my God, this, is, this layout is perfect. Um, the windows were perfectly symmetrical. There were uh, two fireplaces, you know, at opposite sides of the main living room space. It was perfect. It was great architecture in the floors. And of course, the most important thing that I was looking for from day one was ceiling height. I really wanted a, an apartment with really tall ceilings. Of course, my main residence is in New York City and, and most of you who, who are big fans of Homeworthy might remember me and my home tour at the Carlisle, my apartment at the Carlisle in New York, which is my, my home base in New York City. 
the best part of having an apartment in Paris is the minute you get off the plane, you can get in a taxi and come to your own home. <laughs> I don't know why, but all the airplanes arrive early morning in Paris, and of course, as, as it is in Paris, everything is inconvenient. The hotel rooms are never ready until 3 p.m. <laughs> So after years of doing that, I was just so relieved and I pinched myself to think, wow, I actually can come home to a place of my own here in this city. Apartments in Paris have the most amazing architectural character and typically you get these wonderful ceiling heights. So when I bought this apartment, I was enamored with this crown molding in this entrance foyer and it was all about grandeur, grandeur, grandeur. And I wanted to play up the fabulous scale of this entrance foyer. Um, so I use this wonderful marbleized ceiling wallpaper. It's actually from Scalamandre uh, and it's marbleized and has this wonderful red and blue uh, and it really is an homage to the architecture and the marbleized and the fanciness of these grand grand old Parisian apartments. On the walls I did this wonderful uh, applique. It's just a very simple half bead uh, molding that I had my contractor paint in uh, gilded, um, gilded gold. And right in front of it I put this lovely little banquette. And you know when you add upholstery into an entrance foyer it really makes it feel as though the foyer is you know an additional little seating area so when I actually have an overflow of guests and a party in here and have an overflow of people in the living room they actually come and you know, congregate here. Um, I loved the uh, beautiful chevron uh, floors throughout the apartment um, and I really worked very very meticulously with my contractor to clean them um, and I wanted to preserve them as much as possible. Having a grand entrance foyer is always an opportunity for me to decorate and gild the lily. So I always like to place you know, furniture pieces in an entrance foyer to merely make it feel like it's decorated. So for instance, in this room, I put this wonderful chest of drawers and opposite, I have this fantastic Biedermeier bookcase. And I always like to you know, decorate bookcases with sort of eccentric objects, not just books. I tuck this fabulous little painting in there. Um, you know, I've been shopping the Paris flea markets ever since I was a kid, uh, you know, for clients. And of course, every time I go, I pick up stuff for myself. Um, and I love to have an eccentric mix of things. I always feel like the home is, is really a reflection of your personality. And it's an important thing to have, you know, wonderful objects that really reflect your personality. And of course, I'm an eccentric, so um, of course I have a lot of eccentric little things. Like for instance, this fabulous little tempiero, which is actually quite heavy. <laughs> it's very heavy. Um, and then this wonderful, uh, this is actually a really sort of like a, a, a fabulous little find. It's like actually the bomb, an underside of a bomb um, shell. And you can see that it says the size of the artillery on the back. And somebody had, had um, installed this uh, Canadian coin in there. I thought that was very clever. Um, and this fabulous bust. I love busts and I always think that they add a lot of character and a lot of strength to a space. Um, so I positioned him right here. In Paris, they, they actually define apartments by the size of the square meter, which is totally confusing to me. <laughs> I don't understand any of that language. And they're like, oh, X, X amount square footed, uh, square meters. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know what that means. Um, so in New York City, we always go by square feet. And I sort of know what the square footage is. It's, it's probably around 1,200 square feet here. Uh, it was a two bedroom apartment, uh, but the, the living rooms in Paris tend to be small. So it was the same was true with this apartment. So I decided that I would, you know, remove the wall between the main living room and the second bedroom and really create this grand, grand salon-like living room. Uh, of course, you know, I'm so grand and I love to have a grand interior. Um, and it's, it's really great. It's wonderful to entertain, to have people over. Um, I specifically bought this apartment actually for my 50th birthday. I know, can you believe I'm 50? <sighs> Tragique. <laughs> And I actually had a bunch of people over and it was a great big party and I just really love to entertain and having great grand spaces for entertaining is key. And voila, here is my fabulous grand salon living room. Um, in Paris, I found that there are quite a few sm apartments that are large, but they have small living spaces. So this room, the wall between the living room and actually the second bedroom was removed to create the grandeur of the space. And this is what I loved about this apartment is really the ceiling heights and the size of this wonderful salon room. You have these double sided fireplaces on either end with these wonderful pairs of mirrors. Again, there's my mirror trick. 
And the mirror trick is also you know, pervasive in the Enfiat because you'll see how I used it uh, when we go through into the next room. The room was actually quite wonderful because of the symmetry. Um, and really what I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, have a string of intimate seating areas within this large space. Uh, it reminded me of uh, a much larger, much grander, uh, iconic sort of Parisian style hotel particulier, <laughs> so to speak. Um, and the room really had this great symmetry about it. You know, I had two fireplaces on either side, so I created these two doorways uh, going into the dining room adjacent. And on the opposite side, we created these uh, two bookcases that really reflect um, the balance and the symmetry uh, for the space. It's really lovely. Those of you who follow me on Instagram really know that I love my Greek key carpet. It's really quite iconic and you see it a lot in my interiors. Um, so this was a perfect opportunity to sort of infuse a really bit, a bit of a modern character into a space which is really quite classic and wonderful. Um, so I used the Greek key carpet in here. I love the scale of it. I think it really, really fills the room beautifully. Uh, and it also helps me divide the room up into smaller intimate seating groupings. So in the foreground area, I have this fabulous little sofa seating area. Um, a lot of the pieces in my apartment I found at the Paris flea markets. I love shopping the Paris flea markets and finding you know, wonderful eccentric objects are uh, amazing, such as this amazing little um, Art Nouveau sort of little brass bowl. I just found this and even, even the underside is gorgeous. Um, and of course, this Kelvin Laverne coffee table. I bought this actually at the flea markets too. Um, a lot of the pieces that I have in here were actually in my house in Montreal originally. Uh, when I bought my apartment in Paris, I ended up shipping the stuff that I bought at the Paris flea markets back to Paris <laughs> um, because I really loved uh, having it here. Um, but again, the eccentric mix of things uh, to me is, is super important. Um, you know, for instance, this uh, fabulous little tray that I bought when I was in Morocco, um, you know, next to this. Uh, you know, this you know, very eccentric little um, multicolored, um, um, I think this is um, Gustavian. Um, and then these wonderful candlesticks from Michael Aram. Uh, I love, again, they, they continue the branch form from the branch display over there. And they sit on top of the uh, Calvin Laverne table that actually has uh, leaves and branches on it. So it's sort of a very subtle play. Um, and here's a great trick. When you actually want to have a coffee table on your, on your coffee table, um, open it to your favorite page because it's always a great way to start a conversation when you have guests over and they come to sit down and they're like, oh, you know, this book is, happens to be open to this page. And then you can just, you know, delve right into the conversation about why it is open to that page because it's your, your, your favorite part of the book. <laughs> Um, so on this end of the room, I designed these two banquette seating areas um, that really reflect each other. Um, and what they are what I call a near pair. You know, sometimes it's fun to be a little bit playful with symmetry by making it a little bit asymmetrical. So you'll see here that, you know, on one side I have this gigantic stone coffee table. Um, it's low, so it's not too imposing. Um, but on the other side, I actually have uh, a little bit more delicate pair of little tables. These are fabulous little tables. These I bought in the Paris flea market as well. They're amazing. Um, and, you know, I love to uh, play, be very playful with my pillows. You know, those of you who know my work know this, that I love pillows. Pillows, 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 pillows. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm not afraid to mix patterns. I'm not af afraid to mix textures. And, you know, people are often afraid, you know, and they, they you know, when you show them, uh, you know, these fabrics together, you know, on a small color palette, they're just like, oh my goodness, how would you mix these together? Um, but look how amazing they are. And they really, you know, hold the space beautifully and they're playful. Um, I love my giant canvas art. Um, those of you who follow me on Instagram also know that I do a lot of that. Um, I you know, just love to do these iconic uh, sort of classic images printed onto canvas um, that really you know, gives the space a, uh, a classical feeling, but also printed on the canvas with a, a very straight uh, return side gives it over a little bit of a modern uh, interpretation of a very classic detail. Um, the architecture of the room was very strong, so I really took my cues from that. These fireplaces, look how gorgeous these are. This is amazing. This is a beautiful Verde marble. Um, so these two you know, built-in mirrors on either, either side of the room uh, helped me you know, bring the language of the architecture of the fireplaces up uh, to the ceiling. 
Um, these two built-in bookcases are really sort of designed like pairs of doors that really kind of reflect the enfilade of the, of the other doors on the opposite side of the room so that the two elevations on the two ends of the living room are actually perfectly symmetrical, which I love. It's really, really eccentric. Um, and I love to have low chairs. You know, I think low chairs really augment ceiling height. Um, these are the loveliest little slipper chairs. Um, I have these made by my upholstery workroom in Canada. Um, they're wonderful. Um, and I think that, you know, they're very, they're very friendly and a lot of people love to just, you know, plop in and sit down on them. Um, this is a wonderful little vintage uh, Baker uh, chair that I bought. Uh, bought this is actually in a thrift shop in New York City. Um, and this is my own fabric design. Um, I had this fabric done by Peter Fasano and uh, I designed it and they printed it for me. Isn't that fabulous? Um, and, then, and then a pair of banquettes on either side of the living room on this side of the room are sort of like, you know, they're very casual. Uh, they're armless and they're like bench, they're almost like bench style banquettes. They're very characteristic of the work that I do. I use these all the time. My upholsterer makes these for me all the time. Um, and I, find, I feel like they're very friendly and people love to like, you know, come and sit in this corner. Um, it's really fun. Um, and they have these wonderful end tables that really, uh, they really are punctuation marks to the two banquettes uh, that sit in this corner. Um, the antique mirror tops are actually vintage and original. And then a really fun sort of whimsical nod to the Greek key are these great green um, mid-century modern lamps with the little collar of the Greek key going through. It's just fabulous, isn't it? You know, I love to do a lot of mirror work. Um, in my apartment at the Carlisle, if you remember, I had done mirrored jams. So in this apartment, I loved the fact that the sky could be reflected in mirrors on the sill. So if you come and stand here, you can actually see the sky. Um, you know, this apartment happens to be on the first floor in Paris. And in Paris, um, the city was actually developed way before the elevator. Um, so the first floor apartments tend to be the grander apartments because when the city was built, those are the apartments that were, you know, pri the prize apartment. It was called La Belle Etage. Um, so that was actually the coveted floor. So, so now, uh, even though in New York everybody wants to be in the penthouse, <clears throat> in Paris the more grand apartments are actually the first floor apartments. So it's a really great trick in order to bring the sky in, even though you're sort of on a low floor, it's really fun to have a mirrored windowsill. And those of you who watched my homeworthy tour of the Carlisle in New York City would know that it would not be a Garrow Kettigan design room without a hidden TV somewhere. Can you find the TV on this wall? <laughs> here's, this, here's the key. This is the secret. I hide the remote control in this little urn. Isn't that fabulous? <laughs> so where the banquette seating area is really for a larger group of people, the foreground area is really for when you have a smaller intimate group of people. And I love this little area. It's you know, organized around the foreground fireplace. And I have these fabulous uh, Janssen chairs that I bought um, you know, also at the Paris flea market and this wonderful little Japan table, um, this really quirky little vase, which is fantastic. Um, and I love, you know, to really, again, put pillows on everything. <laughs> so I have these wonderful little eye-cut look looking little velvet pillows that I actually trimmed on the back with a contrasting color. I think that that's really fun. Um, and then those of no you who know me and know my work and have seen my apartment at the Carlisle, uh, remember that I love to do these wonderful printed canvas art pieces. Um, and so this is actually a fantastic piece. I actually had it in my house in Montreal. I printed it, you know, oversized scale. Um, and I love the, the dramatic sort of old master art character of the piece. It's just printed on the canvas. Um, and then just giving it a very simple square reveal return gives it a very modern effect in a, you know, in a, in a more uh, traditional subject matter. I think it's a great mix of the modern and traditional together. Again, mirroring things is a great strategy for making you know, spaces feel much larger. This is a lovely little mirrored side table which has an antique mirrored top on it. And I found these lovely little 
um, candlesticks. These aren't these amazing? These are fabulous. They're like sort of a faux tortoise shell. Um, you know, they're I think they're cast in resin. But I, the minute I saw them, I was like, these are these are divine. Um, I love the movement. I love the character. And then when you put them on a mirrored top, it's like actually just a, you know like a continuation of the cuckoo bananas <laughs> candlestick base. It's fabulous. <laughs> I, um, you know, one of the things that I love is, uh, you know, furniture pieces that are a little eccentric. Um, this is a fantastic console table um, that I actually purchased. I purchased this in New York from the Antique and Artisan Center. Um, and it had these wonderful little swag nail head trim on it. Uh, and the minute I saw it, I said, oh, you know, doesn't it look so French in a way? It has like this wonderful little swag detail. Um, so it was perfect, perfect to come into my apartment here. Um, this little bench is a custom design. Uh, I had this made by my upholstery workroom and has a little Greek key G on the side. Look at that, fabulous. And it goes really well with my carpet. Love that. And then I always love to use branches in, in all my interiors because it always adds a little bit of a, a raw and you know, nat natural effect. Um, you know, it was funny, I went out looking for branches and in New York it was so easy to find them because it's Central Park, but, but Paris, they're so organized and they collect branches off the street like, you know, fastidiously. It was hard to find actually. So these aren't as good as I would look, normally like them to be. The color story for this room was actually inspired by a kitchen that I had seen in a Milan design uh, show house, showroom, uh, a few years ago. And uh, it was this vibrant, wonderful tomato red and it had this blue ceiling and it really spoke to me. And I said, you know, one day in one of my interiors, I would love to use this color story. And it was really when I walked through this apartment, you know, the minute I saw the apartment, I said, wow, you know what? I think I'm gonna use that color story uh, for this room. And of course, for this color story, I had to sort of add my own touch to it. So um, those of you who know my work know that I love to use this, uh, this wonderful sort of mustardy brown, taupey, taupey color that I call brown paper bag, uh, which was my living room on Park Avenue many years ago. Um, but I used that actually to do ac accented trim throughout the apartment. Uh, you might remember having seen that in the foyer. Um, and I like to use uh, one color thread that then travels throughout the apartment. So come and take a look at what I did with it in the dining room. There are so many advantages to living in Paris, but for me as a designer, the most important thing is inspiration. Uh, whenever I feel my batteries are depleted from inspiration, I love coming here and just walking the streets and just taking it all in. Um, you know, Paris is the city of beauty, and uh, I really feel like you know, I'm so inspired here. It really is an inspirational city in terms of design. Everything that they do here is all about the pretty. And of course, the croissants and the baguettes, of course. I should really hold off on eating those, but I do anyway. <laughs> I am actually, you know, pretty, pretty proficient in French. Uh, all the years of coming here, I grew up in Canada. Um, from Montreal and you know Canadians do tend to be bilingual although they the Canadians in the West speak more English and the Canadians in the East speak more French um, Luckily, uh, you know Montreal is kind of a good blend of the two languages and and I had a lot of in immersion of in the French language <laughs> growing up My brother lived here for a long time, so I would come and visit him often um, and I just have a love of the French culture, French language, so I immerse myself here and I really force myself to talk to people in French when I'm here and it actually helps me practice. Even though uh, a lot of people here speak English and at, at the beginning when I first came here they'd all switch over to English. And you know, I feel like now after being, you know, coming here for so many years, that I, it's a little bit more of a compliment to myself where they don't change anymore. They actually continue speaking to me in French. So maybe that's a sign that I've improved my French a little bit. As with most designers who love to entertain uh, at home, you know, this fabulous countertop became, you know, doubles actually as a bar. So I love to have a fabulous tray. Um, some great, you know, you know, bottles of, you know, things to serve for people. Um, and, you know, another thing that I loved uh, was the concept of creating uh, the shelf for display. Um, you know, the idea of sort of having, you know, great ceiling height and to use that ceiling height um, is key. Um, you know, just creating, you know, a little bit of a feature wall. Um, and I love to mix eccentric things together. So there's a sort of a collection of uh, brass candlesticks, um, this eccentric, you know, uh, view of Venice, 
Um, and then what I think is actually the, the dome of uh, St. Peter's, I think it's St. Peter's, um, because I think there's like a little palm tree there. So I found that in a, in a thrift shop in New York. I love that piece. The cabinet in contrast to the rest of the apartment uh, is sort of a little bit more contemporary. Um, you know, because it sort of landed like a spaceship into this dining room space. Um, it really needed to be a little bit more contemporary. Um, and so I painted it all black. Um, there are some really little fun gold lines that go through it, almost like a little Mondrian, Mondrian painting. <laughs> um, and of course, a uh, honed marble top is, you know, the, for me, the essence of a beautiful marble uh, a piece. Um, I'm never really too uh, concerned about staining marble. Uh, when you think about all the beautiful interiors in Italy, they have these wonderful 200-year-old countertops that are like stained with you know, hundreds of years of olive oil stains, and they, they tend to look beautiful. So um, I, love, I love the honed, unsealed, beautiful uh, Calcutta marble. I'll take that any day over any man-made products, that's for sure. <laughs> The architecture of this room is what really drove the inspiration from my design and it really all started with this wonderful chevron floor. The chevron floors are all original to the apartment um, and I worked carefully with my contractor to restore them um, and it, I just think that they're brilliant and it's amazing how uh, such an old floor could really have such a modern feeling to it. You know, we are using chevron floors today in modern interiors and it's still very contextually uh, relevant. Um, this is a fabulous Biedermeier uh, table that I actually bought um, in a thrift shop in New York City. Can you even believe it? Um, and it, it, had its, uh, it had its day in my entrance foyer in my house in Montreal and it ended up here. Um, and I always love to, to sort of put different chairs around a dining table. I think it's more whimsical, it's more fun. So I put these two armchairs on the ends and I mix them uh, with these two side chairs. But you know, if you pay close attention, you'll actually see that the fabric is the same. So the fabric is actually this wonderful uh, Chelsea Editions diamond. Um, and unfortunately now it's been discontinued, but when they, when they had this fabric, I used to use it all the time. Um, so on the armchairs, I did the very pale green, and on the side chairs, I did the brown. So I think it's a really a sort of a fun way to um, relate two chairs that are actually unrelated um, and organize them around uh, a space. Um, then one of my favorite um, shops in Paris, uh, I can't remember what, what it's called, but it's a little perfume shop, and they have these wonderful little bouillot lamps that sit right on their countertop. So when I saw this lamp at the Paris flea market, I thought, oh gosh, I really want to have this on my dining table, because it's sort of unexpected. Um, and when you see this dining table, you actually see it when you come in from the front door, you're looking right through. Um, so I wanted this table to almost feel like it could be like a center table and not, you know, just a dining table. So it really helped me do that by placing this little lamp here. You know, it's really cute. Um, one of my favorite elements in this room is this fabulous wooden chandelier. Um, it's, a, it's a lantern. Um, and when I purchased it, I, I bought this from the Paris flea markets and the vendor told me that it was um, actually uh, 18th century, but I'm not sure, I don't know. Um, but it really just has a beautiful raw quality about it and I think it contrasts well with all the other polished details of the space. The built-in bookcase behind the Bancat is uh, another opportunity to sort of add some whimsical character to the room. So I always love uh, using built-in bookcases to add a little bit of animation uh, and some personality. So of course, it's not just for plates and dishes and you know fancy things. You have sort of you know overflow of books and you know other interesting little objects. Um, and again, inspired by that uh, perfume shop that we saw, um, we put these wonderful little applique candles up there, which you know are really fun to light when you're having a great party. So in this room also, I have these wonderful canvas pieces. Like this was actually another printed canvas that I had in my house in Montreal. It made its way over here. Um, and these wonderful sculpture pedestals. But when I first purchased them, I thought, oh, I'm going to paint them. Um, but, then, but then they made their way here, and I just kind of love the contrasting color. You know, I think that sometimes a room needs to have a foreign element. You know, something that you would never think to mix into a room and be like, oh, I never thought to put it there, but it actually looks so good there. So these appliques were actually arms of an old chandelier um, that, was, that were repurposed. So this actually would sit into uh, a chandelier um, and uh, we had the contractor build these little uh, clips 
uh, on the wall and they just sit right in there and they're actually uh, movable. Isn't that fun? Just very whimsical. So again, also, uh, I'm never afraid to mix color and pattern. Um, so another opportunity on this wonderful, uh, you know, antique cognac uh, leather bench was to put in, you know, a few personality pillows. Um, so this is a wonderful um, flame stitch uh, chevron from Schumacher. Um, this is a fabulous Greek key, sort of an homage and, you know, a reflection back to the carpet that's in the living room. Um, and then again, a spot of yellow, you know, for, for that foreign element in the room. Um, speaking of which, I used yellow actually as a cuff on the undersides of the curtains in this room. Um, I had picked um, this wonderful uh, chevron uh, Missoni-like fabric. It's actually, um, it's actually from Castel, Maison Castel, uh, one of my favorite fabric showrooms. And um, I love the personality of the movement of the chevron in the fabric with the floor. And I think that's a very subtle connection. Um, but I didn't want it to just touch the floor. I wanted there to be a little bit of a separation between the two. Uh, so I decided that I would cuff the curtains with a very tall uh, cuff in a yellow, um, which again is sort of a little bit of an unexpected, a little foreign element coming through uh, and works perfectly with the foreign element uh, sculpture pedestal. This fantastic chair is actually one of a pair. Uh, I used them originally in my Kip Space show house back in 2016, uh, which was a chalk paneled room. Some of you might remember that project. It was really fun. Um, and I love these chairs. I found them also at the Paris flea market and there's a right and a left. So one of them has, has the angle going to the right and the other one goes to the left. And I bookended this entire apartment with these two chairs. So you'll see the other one that appears uh, back in my bedroom when we get over there. Um, but again, I put the uh, Greek key uh, fabric on here, which is again, you know, sort of a connection back to the living room Greek key. And I just love the whimsical character of the legs. So these little Corinthian columns, look how fantastic these are. You know, the, the chairs themselves actually have the personality of the architecture of the apartment in them, which is wonderful. So in the mornings, my favorite thing to do is actually to make tea and sit in this corner. And continuing the enfiade concept through the space, these wonderful mirrors are actually terminus, terminus of the view looking in from the living room. See what I mean? It's fabulous, isn't it? So the original kitchen was this lovely little pokey little kitchen space that's off of the dining area. Um, and I really, you know, sort of made the most of it. Um, it has a uh, hidden refrigerator, um, a little cabinet here for storage, uh, a dishwasher, voila, beeps, and a little sink, you know. But the most important thing to me in Paris, when you come to Paris, is you must get yourself this fabulous tea. Um, this goes back to the concept of the scent of the space. This is the most brilliant scented tea and I love it. It's Mariage Frère and it's their black opera tea. It really is. I'm like doing an advertisement for them. Um, but I'm addicted to this. It's fabulous. So every time I come to Paris, I must run to Mariage Frère and get my tea. Uh, and of course, my Nespresso machine. It was the very first thing I bought when I moved to Paris. <laughs> when I bought my apartment in Paris, I was like, ran to the shop and said, I must have an espresso. So it's small, but very practical. Um, and then the idea of using uh, large uh, artwork in a small space is really fun. You know, this fantastic, gigantic scene of Venice, you know, it's unexpected. You know, it's un, you know, it's again, it's one of these foreign element things that, you know, gives the room a scale that you would normally not, you know, think to, to use in a space like this, but it really gives the, it extends the grandeur into an otherwise not grand space. <laughs> So the dining room actually spills out into this space. Um, and this is actually the most adorable little jewel box of a room. Uh, and I love powder rooms. So this is my homage to Napoleon. <laughs> Come and take a look. Isn't this the cutest little powder room you've ever seen in your life? It's so cute. Um, I always love to use furniture pieces for uh, vanities. And this was a little piece of furniture that was revamped to use as a little vanity. Um, and of course, again, the concept of using giant art in a space is key to making a space feel like it's actually more grand than it is. So this giant canvas takes up the entire space. <laughs> it's fabulous. 
Um, the, the ceiling is actually uh, you know, characterized by this vintage uh, toile de juillet wallpaper. Uh, it's sort of an idyllic scene. It's kind of a funny little uh, you know, play on, on Napoleon and his original roots. Um, and then I have this fabulous uh, root mirror that I actually bought at Arteriors many years ago. Uh, I just had not found the right home for it until I bought this apartment. And then when I got that wallpaper, I said, you know, what a great uh, thematic relationship between the branches of this fabulous mirror and that crazy, idyllic little uh, farm theme <laughs> wallpaper border. It's fabulous, isn't it? So revamping a uh, piece of furniture and reinventing it and using it for a new purpose is always really fun. Um, I often try and shop and find uh, old pieces of furniture that uh, need a new life. Um, so in this instance, we have this green marble uh, backsplash. Uh, so the vanity was painted in the green uh, to match the, the backsplash as closely as possible. And I think it was a great, a great detail. Um, the hammered uh, custom uh, brass sink basin fits perfectly. And it's very shallow because, you know, as everything in Paris, everything is quite tight. <laughs> this is actually a really small little bathroom space. Um, the, the Amphiad concept is also continued through this space because what this is is actually a pair of doors on this side of the, the hallway. This is the grand entry foyer again. So you have a pair of doors here, and that's actually reflected on the other side with a pair of doors that go into the bedroom. Come and take a look at this. I actually had a large apartment on Park Avenue for many years and uh, I sort of got tired of all the guests staying with me and actually I'm so happy now in New York and Paris I have a small apartment uh, when guests come to visit me I love to put them up in New York at the University Club or in Paris at one of the boutique hotels in this lovely little neighborhood. Um, this apartment is located in the 9th arrondissement which is really close to the Paris Opera. Um, I really told my, my real estate broker I wanted something very French and very authentic. I really wanted to be in a neighborhood where you walk out the door and you don't hear a stick of English, which is exactly what this neighborhood is. There's a wonderful street right next door to mine which is really iconic. It's called Rue de Martyr. And there are some wonderful little shops on that street and those shops have literally been there for like a hundred years. There's a little cheesemonger shop there that's been there for 200 years. It's unbelievable. This apartment to me is really my getaway. You know, everyone needs a getaway in their life. And, uh, you know, especially being, you know, an, an interior designer in New York City, life is so hectic. Um, there's so much going on. And uh, coming to Paris for me is really my getaway. So I really love to luxuriate and really treat myself. And, and, and as I give you the tour of the house, you'll see in many instances how I was able to do that with this space. So you see what I mean? This pair of doors is a perfect reflection of the doors opposite to the powder room. It's wonderful to create that sense of perfect symmetry. Come on through and take a look at my bedroom. Bedrooms to me really need to be cozy and comfortable and a cocoon-like feeling. So that's why I always use canopy beds for my own personal beds. Uh, I always find it uh, difficult to get clients to, you know, convince them to do canopy beds. So I ended up doing them for me in all my residences because I just love the feeling of being in a bed like this. When you have a big ceiling height in a space like this for a bedroom, it's always great to have a canopy bed because it creates a little bit of intimacy uh, within the room. So this is kind of like a, a little bit of a room within a room. The canopy, um, the valance creates a little bit of a cocoon-like effect. Um, and I love the, you know, architecture within architecture. The bed is this fabulous iron bed um, that I found in the Paris flea markets. It has beautiful iron work on it. And uh, I wanted to continue the iron theme by creating this fabulous pair of uh, bedside tables. They're, these are actually tray top tables, they're Gustavian. Um, and I just think that they have the, the greatest little details. Um, and then sort of to continue the theme of the iron, you know, the rawness of the iron, I actually designed this burlap bedside, t um, uh, it's like a bed spread actually on top of the bed because I just, I love the raw quality of it. Um, and then the burlap is almost the same color as the walls, which is really great. So it really jumps the walls onto the bed. Um, but of course, you know, when I use, uh, you know, a rough material like burlap, it's always really fun to like trim it. 
um, with, with a little bit of a fringe trim, so to sort of gild the lily, uh, it's sort of an unexpected little detail to add a little bit of a fringe onto burlap. It's actually kind of fun. I'm all about mixing patterns and textures. Um, so on my bed, uh, I always love to use my own bed pillows. Um, so here's a trick. When you buy your bed linens, uh, you just buy your sheets. Don't buy, don't buy the bed, the bed pillows. You know, the bed pillows are, are really not necessary. You can actually have your own bed pillows. Um, and I love to mix color and patterns and textures. So this is a fabulous um, Etro fabric that was through Clarence House, which has unfortunately been discontinued now, but I love this fabric when they had it. I used to use it on all my projects. Um, and you see how, you know, mixing different patterns and textures really works. It sort of helps, helps pull the whole room together. Animating your bedside tables is one of the most fun and interesting things to do. Of course, I love to have a book, um, something that I might be reading or in the middle of reading. But then, of course, little eccentric little things like these little birds. And I actually found these when I was shopping with a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine, in the Paris Lee Markets. And this sort of reminds me of when we went through on a really rainy day uh, and we found these. Um, and it was really like, it was really special and it's a good memory. It's fun to have. Um, and that the bookcases behind the bed really helped me animate um, the back of the bed wall. And I think that they're fun, and there was a great opportunity in there to use the contrasting color of the red just to pop, just a little bit of a pop of color. Um, it brings in sort of the orangey red from the pillows on the bed, as well as, you know, reminiscent of my fabulous red color tones in the living room. So it's a wonderful thing. Um, the room was very symmetrical again. Uh, the bookcases were actually here. Uh, and the built-in closets are wonderfully uh, augmented by mirrored panels. Um, and this is actually a great little um, decorative uh, trim that I actually purchased from Samuel and Son. It's actually a tape trim with a nail head stud on it. Um, and I felt like that was such a great little detail just to bring a little bit of the red from the living room in here. It's a wonderful detail. This was a fabulous little Anglo-Indian chaise that I purchased from the Paris Lee Market. And uh, for many years, it, it was in my house in Montreal. And um, I just love it. It's just this great little recliner. Um, it's simple, but it has so many wonderful little details about it. You know, starting with the curvature on the back, I think it sort of like um, is, is a great, um, you know, way to enter the room. It's such a gentle curve. Um, the stretcher is wonderful and sort of the bobbin the bobbin detail on the legs and the cross stretchers is wonderful. I use this fabulous mohair velvet. I love mohair. Um, it's a, one of my favorite blue tones. Um, mohair is great because it always like, you know, different lights makes mohair look, at, look differently uh, in different angles and it gives a lot of personality to a fabric like that. Um, this is one of my favorite pillows of all time. This fabric is actually from Schumacher from a while ago. Uh, was discontinued, and when they discontinued, I ran into Schumacher and I begged them to give me all the samples that were left of it so I can make pillows with them. Um, again, the idea of the large canvas art, uh, it's a great way to anchor a room, you know, especially when you have a large wall such as this. Um, and then I like to actually paint a room such as this all one color. So here's a great you know, tip for you guys at home. Um, when you have a room uh, that you have sort of, you, you want to pull everything together, it's always nice to paint the trim and the walls all one color. So in this room, I actually threaded in that uh, brown paper bag color that I was using uh, as the trim in the dining room uh, and the bookcases in the living room um, and actually the crown of the entrance wear. So really, that color uh, presents itself in a couple of different ways and a couple of different areas in the apartment. It really pulls everything together so nicely. Um, then we have this uh, Greek key uh, chair, and actually if you, if you saw the floor plan of the apartment, you'd understand that this is actually diametrically opposite from the chair that's in the dining room. <laughs> so I kind of think it's kind of fun, it's kind of a whimsical little, they face each other you know, through the whole apartment. <laughs> so it's a lovely little, little detail. Um, and then again, my large canvas art. Um, I love this fabric actually. This is a Christopher Farr fabric, it's wonderful, it's called Chicago. Um, in color tobacco. It's actually one of their more modern fabrics. I'm actually working with Christopher Farr on uh, reinventing one of their color colors or their one of their fabrics. So keep an eye out for that. That's coming out soon. As you guys all know, an interior designer's work is never done. So sorry about the mess on my desk. 
Um, but this is actually a work in progress. And uh, in every one of my residences, I always have to have just a little place where I can do my work. So before you guys got here, I'm happy to give you this fabulous grand tour of my apartment. Uh, it's a great little break from, from what I'm working on right now. But uh, of course, every time I have my own residence, I always make sure that I have a great little spot to work. There's a lovely little window in my bedroom. It has a lot of great light. Um, and I, in the winter, I love to crack the window open and, and listen to the sounds of the, of the city in the background. Um, I love to drink my mariage fair tea and work on my sketches. Um, I do a lot of hand sketches, so uh, that's why it's kind of a mess. And opposite from the bed is this wonderful chinoiserie cabinet that I purchased um, at Christie's uh, several years ago. This was actually in my guest bedroom in Montreal, and I'm so glad that it found its way uh, back into this room and helps augment my sprinkling of red as my accent color uh, throughout the guest bedroom. Um, of course, in this room, the ceilings are so much higher than my house in Montreal. I was able to even get this gigantic canvas artwork up there. And I always love to layer. You know, layering is one of the most important things in design to make it feel like the decorator wasn't just there. Uh, it's always fun to sort of put, you know, many different layers together. Uh, so inst instead of just having the canvas up there, I had this wonderful little painting that sits in front of it. Uh, and then, of course, a stack of books and this fabulous little object that I bought in the Paris flea markets and for good luck. It's so important to have a proper bathroom to luxuriate in. Come and see my fabulous bathroom. And even adding this little decorative mirror on the side was a really fun way to sort of break the balance and the symmetry of the space. It's kind of whimsical and it's kind of fun. So it's sort of like, you know, in design, I like to not take, take yourself too seriously. It's always, it's always fun to be a little bit playful. Um, so it's sort of unexpected to place this other random little mirror to the side. It's kind of fun because it breaks off that really stern sense of symmetry. It's just fun. These were just some fabulous uh, bowling pins that I found at the Paris flea market. And I was like, these are just so, so chic and so fun. And they add so much character and so much fun on them, just right there on the windowsill. Uh, of course, the topiaries add a little bit of green into the space. And then the Roman shade is really a decorative Roman shade. It does come down, but I did want to have that chevron pattern uh, coming through it to sort of repeat the idea of that herringbone and chevron that appears in the floors throughout the apartment. It's kind of a very solid uh, detail. Um, also, one of my favorite things to do, and I do this all the time, um, is painting borders on architecture. So this is just a double line border. And here, that actually is the same color as what we saw in the other rooms, is that brown paper bag, sort of mustardy taupe color that comes through. And doing a double line border, it's very easy to do. Um, a contractor and the painter just taped it off and, and did it, it is very nice. And it gives the architecture a little bit of architecture where there is none. You know, there are no moldings on these doors. These are all flat panel doors. And just by adding those little lines, it really gave some structure and some design to them. This is the fabulous Paul Revere lantern um, that I purchased at Holly Hunt. It was one of my favorite light fixtures when it first came out. It's actually been around for a while now. Um, but I thought the shape of it is so interesting. Um, and again, I just love to uh, treat my ceilings uh, as a design element. So you'll see a, in this room, I actually painted the ceiling in this tealy blue green, which repeats the green of the marble on the floors, that repeats the green that is in the dining room as well as in the powder room. So there is a connection uh, between all the rooms throughout the apartment, which is wonderful. Even the ceiling of this little dressing area is mirrored for this cuckoo banana sort of effect. It's really great. Um, and then I continued the wood floor it, right up until the edge of the dressing area because that's the perfect transition between the stone floor of the bathroom and the wood floor of the closet. So the layering of the mirrors in this space is accentuated by this really eccentric duck mirror, duck foot mirror that I found actually in the south of France. And I was actually with friends down in Nice and we were going in and out of some shops. And the minute I saw it, I said, oh, I have to have this for my bathroom. <laughs> Isn't it just cute and whimsical? It's just great to like, you know, counterbalance the seriousness of the architecture of the space with just something fun and friendly. <laughs> well, home is actually the most personal reflection of one's character and one's personality. So whenever I work on interiors for my clients, I always try and get to know them really well, uh, only because I really want to draw out of them, you know, what their personal tastes are and what they like and what, what they don't like. 
Um, of course, when I do my own interiors, it's, you know, I'm very fastidious about exactly what I want to do. And, you know, my clients always remark, you know, you do your interiors, your own home so quickly. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, I walk into a space, it speaks to me. And the minute, the minute I come into the space, I know exactly what I would do for myself. And I tend to give my clients, you know, that effect too. I always tell them, this is what I would do. This is my house. But then I have to listen to them and, and take that, you know, the cue from their own personality and sort of develop the interior based on that. So, so home to me is a very personal thing. And being able to um, reflect one's personality, uh, one's character. I, I love the idea that um, people look at my Instagram and they always recognize and realize um, an interior that's mine. And even though uh, sometimes it's my own personal residence, it's, it's, or if it's a client residence, they can see my personal touch on people's homes, but they also remark that every interior that I do is different and distinctively so, um, because I like to, to really hone in on my, my clients and their character and their personalities. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.